way all the time, and then they're over so fast. And he said that when it was 24 to nothing, right? Uh, right. And I'm like, oh, all right, the worm is going to turn now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it did. And I just wish there were more people. I know. You know, they hear him yeah. say that. He doesn't often get along with Johnny because Johnny teases about his favorite teams rather than, yes. you know what I mean? You know, he has a certain way about him, that right. Johnny. He likes to get under your skin. He's got yeah. a little brother vibes about him. Uh, I mean, the second that the Eagles won and we're going to go into the last game of the season, he, I just get this text, Giants are going to be the spoiler. And I'm like, I don't I don't need to think. <laughs> Let, can shitty. I have a moment in the, in the sun? That's a troll. Troll does that. <laughs> It's a troll. Uh, speaking of trolling, how'd you do over the weekend? I went one in three, Ron. The mm. only game I actually uh, hit was the Kansas City Chiefs game. How did Vito do? He went three and one. Ooh, Vito's the hot hand. Yeah, he has been, really, this whole season. And yeah. Chris, honestly, this week has been on brand for you. Well, last week I was three and one. That, uh, that made me feel... Good and bold, and then I was just brought back, back to her. Like, you no, gotta I know, stay. I know. It's about this week. This week, one. This three. week, you stunk it up. Uh, Earl, how did you do? I believe I went three and one as well. Earl, I believe I'm. You might be fucking wrong. went zero for zero <laughs> because every zero. one of your fucking picks that you gave were the wrong spread. You I, gave the wrong spread for every. <laughs> Single I went game. through cbssports.com. All right, Earl, I'm going to explain it to you. If the Niners were giving up seven points, you said the Niners were going to get seven points. And you did that every game. You don't know how to say the spread. The, the, the 49ers were fucking seven dog seven point underdogs at home? That doesn't make fucking sense. Earl, why, why did you make every fucking pick wrong? I don't know the spreads. I I went on some bad intel and some Bingo. bad advice. Nobody nobody would say the wrong thing. You don't know how to say who's getting and giving points. You're a 58 year old man, and you watch sports every day. You I know sports. sports. I, I don't, how do you not know not who's gambler. getting and who's giving? You I don't have to be. You, gave... you don't have to be a gambler. You know who the favorite is and who's not. Why would the Seahawks be the fucking favorite against the goddamn fucking Packers? Why does it make sense? I think sense? because it was on stories, we don't have it, right? It we might be saved. I'll, I'll bring it. See if we can save it. Yeah. Because when I was looking at it. Mm -hmm. Now, you um, knew right away that the, it was off. Any human being would. Mm -hmm. Any earthling would say th exactly what Chris just said. They're not, you're not going to have the team, <laughs> the better team, playing at home. And then giving fucking points to a right. worse team who's come into their house. I couldn't believe it when the first fucking pick came out of his mouth. Like, well, that's wrong. And then every other one was wrong after it. Because he doesn't know how to read the fucking spread. I apologize that I'm not a degenerate gambler, but... You um, don't have to be a degenerate gambler to just know the under... The fucking home team... You What's don't, wrong, Chris? It's just frustrating because not only did he get it wrong... And he's giving bullshit apologies that mean nothing. I'm acknowledging that I don't know, I Chris. Explain, Why are you giving a bit out of shape? Of it? I'm acknowledging it all. How upset Chris is by this. I've never seen this before. He's so angry, it's like it's making him itchy. It's like he's itching at his skin because it's making him so upset. Yes, he is. He's very itchy right You've now. You've been alive for so long, much longer than me. <laughs> what did I just tell you? I just said, I don't know a thing about it. I am acknowledging <laughs> this. And <laughs> Then why did you say I want to be part yeah. of this? And But the thing is, and this is a problem for you as a, a producer, all you have to do is a little research. It's right there for you. I, again, I... Did you watch theirs? Because maybe that could have tipped you off. No, I did not see that. theirs. That that was that was a problem. I didn't see theirs. No, that all. wouldn't be. I don't have to see Vito's to know <laughs> well, fucking who saying, has fucking plus he, seven and who has minus seven. I'm just saying if he was so lost, and perhaps. There's literally a minus sign when you go <laughs> yes. to look up yes. the line. That's the really fucking confusing thing. The funny thing is, like, he was killing with it. That's why he thinks he went three and one. I know. He picked the upset because he gave... <laughs> The only person that picked the fucking Titans. 
Earl, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And I acknowledge that. I just said I don't. It doesn't seem do. seem no. like you're ducking it. it I'm seems not like ducking you're, it. You, you're acting like your line was the best line. This falls back into his lying shit because Wait, if you notice, well, well, let said, me finish let, now. No, you won't. You throwing all this stuff at me, right? And the first thing out of my mouth was, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Why wouldn't you? You're a man who <laughs> watches sports. That's I don't the gamble, thing that I, I don't watch understand. lines and this, that, and take the over and take the points. Every this, sports that, no. fan wants to know who's picked to win this week. And you you know don't even have to bet on it. I just it. go, like, who's going to win, who's going to lose. I don't go by how many points. I just go, like, I think this team is going to win. I think you know that you win lose. by points, though. I know right. they win by points, points, but I don't care about, like, whether they win by one or by 100. I don't care as long as they win. <laughs> so you're a money line guy. You're only betting the money line. <laughs> Why didn't you say <laughs> yeah. that you're a money line guy? Here's the thing. I mean, you didn't get a chance known. to finish what you wanted to say. So he threw out a lie. He said he got bad intel. Right. That's a lie. Because if he got correct intel, he's just illiterate in reading the well, intel. No, I, well, well, illiterate. Well, let's, no, start, let's go the, back. I said I went by. You said I had the wrong point exactly spread. Like I went by CBSSports.com. If they gave a, if that they was bad did not, intel. not, Earl. They did not. If, the line, if I read a wrong line of you what you were going not by. Really, you had the points correct, but you were giving them to the wrong team. Okay, and I acknowledge that I don't know Well, you that. didn't. You were just saying that that they might have had bad intel. You know? <laughs> now, here's what makes me upset, Gail. Look around here. Chris Stanley made the studio his bitch today. He you did. Know what I mean, he's I mean had, you came in this here. This should have been a knockout day for him. <laughs> it's my little filthy bitch <laughs> But now I got to deal with fucking Earl lying and making shit up. Wait, about, lying you know, and making stuff up. Earl, I mean, Earl. All right, I'm going to bring something up because it's a fucking lie. He, yeah. It's a lie that he doesn't gamble mm. and doesn't know spreads. Remember something from a few years ago called Mr. Perfect when oh, he was fucking... Yeah. Yes, and I, I, made, I picked one football. game. I picked one game. And with the line. I picked one game. Did I know what I was doing? I acknowledge that. I was like, you know what? You said I acknowledge a lot. I, I said... Back then, he didn't yell, I don't know what I'm doing. He felt very <laughs> confident in himself, and he was walking yeah, because I can't, Mr. Perfect. like he was on top of a fucking it's cloud. It's another fucking lie that he yeah. doesn't know what a spread is. It's one after another. No, plus you, seven and this, that, and the other. I just want who wins, who loses. There's just plus seven and minus seven. Uh, we're not, that's not over. that difficult. This, that, and the other, though. You're yeah, forgetting. Just, there's no this, that, and the other. We're not asking you to do this, that, and the other. The thing is, and, and Earl, everyone else on the show seems like they can do it easily, but you can't tell who's getting the points and who's giving the points. <laughs> and you know what? It was funny to me, but and, the lies that came in after the uh, No, fact. Ron, it was never funny to me. I just was filled with rage watching that fucking video. And then for the well, lies, rage make, that I'm, I was somewhat correct or some uh, how could correct, you be correct? Well, Your picks the are moot. The teams, the I, I, I could pick the always turn teams. around and give the favorite team an extra touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way the I love to correct. gamble. The teams were correct. Well, I don't know. I don't even remember what I picked, but the teams were correct. I just screwed up the Why lines. I acknowledge you, that. Didn't get the right teams. This is your job, and you should know whether you were what you came into at the end of it. <laughs> it's your job. You had one job, pick four fucking games. And you you somehow fucking made everything just crazy nonsense with your fucking picks. Did I pick the correct teams? We don't know, dude. <laughs> Give <him> credit, <laughs> Did I pick the correct teams? Knows. Did I correct First of me? all, anyone could pick the fucking home team favorites without the line. That's, the, that's why we don't do it without the line. This is ATS against the fucking spread. The way the American game is played. I mean, again, I, I I'm again. owning up to the fact that I, first no. again, first words out of my mouth. You never acknowledge. You just it. scramble and lie. I mean, scramble and lie. The first words out of my mouth was, "I don't know what I'm doing." No, that's not true. This is the first week that you yelled that. Every other week, you were able to do it correctly. Did he open his? When I made the like picks, that? I don't know what I'm doing. When I made the picks last week, I said. <laughs> I picked just teams, and he yelled at me because I well I didn't get the spread. I didn't even get the true. lines. That's just I'm like true. I picked teams. Oh, that's right. He forgot. Yeah, he forgot. Well, you basically did the same thing this week. You're giving the fucking no, favorite. The I points. picked teams, and then I got crap for not like going with like what well, plus or minus or whatever. You want to be taking off this I, so close to the end of the year? 
You want to be taken out? I hate, hold on. I hate that he says plus or minus or whatever because he obviously knows it's Everybody plus a would. number, minus a number, <laughs> not whatever. There's no fucking overs, unders, there's nothing. There's no props. It's the fucking basic fucking bet. Take what team at what fucking point spread? Either plus or I minus. Mean, this is something that Chris enjoys, Vito has enjoyed. You have heard that for that. I mean, yes, taking I mean, that away from them. Yeah. Look, I love Lockdown. Was it a good season? No. It was right. dreadful. It was really bad. Worst. I can admit that. But you didn't lie. I never lied. Every yeah. fucking pick was the correct <laughs> spread, and it was a fucking actual true fucking thing I thought. Like, Would I it be thought, better if yes. you lied? No, Ron. No, I don't want to be like Earl. I don't want to make shit up and then fucking lie about bad intel. Let's go to Tyler in Atlanta. Hey, Tyler. Chris Stanley, what's up, bruh? What's up, bruh? Great phone. I have a tally mark of how many times Earl says the word again, and when I get to 100, I'm going to drive my car off the bridge. <laughs> again, 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 oh, again, again, oh, again, 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 That's manslaughter. <laughs> That's manslaughter. And you slaughtered a man. People have noticed that you do say it again. I have to say it again because I'm saying the same things over and over again, and I have to repeat it because somehow it doesn't resonate. No, hold on. Earl, I'm bringing up valid points, and you're just repeating yourself like a goddamn That's broken true. record. Points. That is true. He because is... the first thing I... <sighs> what is it? Because the nope. first thing I said was, I, I don't know. I, I said, I have no idea. And I just... I just... <laughs> Why wouldn't you have some idea by your age? Because you're I don't guy gamble. You, you watch the sport... You don't have to gamble to know what the line is. You don't have to gamble to know You're not whether... a gambler. No, I'm not a gambler. And every week you read the line because you want to see if your team's favored or not. Exactly. And they go, oh, they're not going to fucking blow us out by 13, this fucking thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you get emotional about it. I, I go by who wins or loses. That's all I care about. Well, I mean, is... that's what the NFL does. And, and by the way, there's not anything to care about. To care about it would be whether it's a good game or not. Do you know whether yeah. the fucking Yankees would win in seven or th five? Does that matter to you? Of course yeah, that, it does. Yes, that part of it, absolutely. But well, that's one of the things you... people bet on. Okay. Well, you're, the only reason for that, there's no official reason for that. The only re reason is because people bet on that. That thing that you call the toy costs every week. <laughs> Do you realize that people sense. bet on that? Every week he says toy costs. It's unbelievable. I can't believe that. I have his picks if you want to listen to them. Yeah, That's please. Okay. This is from over the weekend. This is EMX. Things didn't go uh, quite as planned last week. Huh? But as they say, you win some, you lose some. Here's this week's NFL playoff picks. Take the 49ers, plus seven. The Titans, minus nine and a half. The Chiefs, plus nine and a half. And the Seahawks, minus four and a half. You can't keep a good man down. All power to the people. All right, first of all, you have this character who's like the scary jail guy, right? Mm -hmm. Why would you start with an apology? Why would you say it didn't go the way we want it last week? That's not week? The, 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 the takeover didn't go quite as planned. But that's not what that guy would do. You know what I mean? The first week you did it was great. It was a scary black guy in prison. Everybody loved it. Like you know what I mean? It was great. This week you're, you're backpedaling. Oh, I made some mistakes. Then, you, <laughs> now, the points. let's say the Titans, for example. Did you really think that they were going to give up Nine and a half to what was being described as the best team in football all year long. Wouldn't that have been a crazy bet? I again, I I just thought you just I, said, I it said it. You just said again. Why? I'm worried now about I'm Tyler. just saying to you, and you didn't because you never answered this before. When you made that statement, the Titans minus nine and a half. Did it seem odd to you that they would? Be nine and a half points in the bucket before the game even started, when they're playing against the MVP at home with all that speed. It's one of the best offenses. This all is time. one of the biggest fucking upsets in playoff history, and weirdly, even with the line, even with you giving up points, you won it. Even giving up points, he was able uh, to win it. Yeah, this fucking made up bet. Mm -hmm. What bookie did you go to? <laughs> I don't know any. That's my point. I don't know. <laughs> Bookies. I don't gamble. Well, you all know that you've made that statement over and over. 
The fact is, any man would know just by logic. You're, you're paying attention to what you're doing, right? At no point did a light bulb go off with you. Why did you say that you picked the uh, Titans minus nine and a half? Why would you say that? I, I, I said it. I misspoke, and I said, but, I thought, I was on, I don't know, I, guess, I, don't, I don't know. See, I thought because I knew it was going to, I th- didn't think it was going to be a 10 point, they won't win by at least 10 points, um, the, the Ravens. I thought it was going to be a tight game. I, right, but you went and gave the Ravens <laughs> nine and a half points. So the yeah, Ravens I, were winning the game nine and a half. I got, I got the lingo wrong. I got the language wrong. But it's, no, you, the language was hit. correct. <laughs> the words were all correct, technically. But it was the spread. Well, you lied the about the spread yeah. again. You, was it not? Okay, I went by CBSSports.com. Stop bringing them up. We'll be sued by them. We cannot use the word CBS Sports and say that they give out they these guys. They probably gave the correct yeah. spread. I They'll hit imagine. us with a fucking cease and desist so quick, girl. I didn't know if the line changed or didn't change. I didn't know. I went by what I saw. The fucking Ravens st- bus would have had to crash into a fiery mess <laughs> That's, for that to happen. They've served their 20-point swing in a football game over the course of a week ever. <laughs> again. How, how, again. Again, Earl, you lie and then you scramble you know, okay. to, to fucking what the, uh, Earl, fix I'm the I'm fine lies. with you lying. I have no problem with you lying. I'm a fan. Earl, you're breaking you equipment. Jacking? I'm not breaking thing. equipment. Earl, I'm just, just trying not to say. I'm just don't touch the it. first things I said out of my you're mouth. Just handy to the mic. Just don't touch it, Earl. Don't start smashing that microphone. We don't go over to Hard Rock and start smashing the fucking mm, plates. Cheeseburgers. <laughs> <laughs> Sliders. <laughs> Earl, are we doing GPS this week? Doing it next week. Next week. Okay. Yes. Is that a lie? If it's a lie, you got No, me. it is not a lie. We're doing it next week. I bet I come in here tomorrow and we're doing it. <laughs> He's going to start giving you spreads on GPS. You know what weeks mean, right? I know that you don't, you don't make calendars, but you know the difference between one week and another. Yes, we're doing uh, it next week. Oscar noms came out, and uh, we're already going to have an Oscar so white mm-hmm. and a director's so male. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. And that thing annoys me because it would make more sense if you complained all year that there's not enough black movies or not enough women directors. Makes more sense than who we give a stupid fucking statue to. Right. Um, How about going to see women directors? Yes. That would be very helpful. All right, here are the the directors. Uh, Martin Scorsese, Quentin Tarantino, Bong Joon-ho for Parasite, Sam Mendes, this was the big surprise that pushed people out. Yeah. 1917, no one thought it was going to be such a no. big thing. And then Todd Phillips for Joker, Joker, Joker. Um, who's missing from this list? From director? Yeah. Uh, bi- uh, well, first of all, uh, Greta Gerwig for Little Women, considering uh, they threw Little Women out there with a bunch of other Oscars. Uh, kind of leading us to believe you thought it was a good movie, and normally you would give the nod to the director for that reason. I would actually say this, though. I uh, Not only have I not seen Little Women, I haven't talked to anyone who has seen Little mm-hmm. Women. There's something about that, that to the modern viewer, it's not something that they... It feels like school for people. Yeah. <laughs> have you seen it, Gail? I haven't, but I am looking forward to it. I, I mean, I would have seen it if she was nominated, but I can't, now you I mean, can't. I can't waste no my point. time. Now. Don't do it, Ron. I still got to go see <laughs> Boon Joon Ho. Parasite. Par- yeah. Uh, which is already being made into an HBO TV show. I saw that, and it's incredibly annoying. I don't want to saw... fucking go pay money to see a pilot to a fucking TV <laughs> no, show, No, Chris. no, the movie's going to be better than a TV show. I'm it guess. is the pilot, they said. It that... picks up. This is, they said, HBO said, consider this movie our pilot. That's so annoying, because I, I, that makes me like the movie less now, because I really liked the movie when I saw it. And the director is Well, direct... I like pilots all the time. Manifest <laughs> scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Uh, and this director's guy did Snowpiercer, a movie I fucking despised and hated. But he won me back with Parasite. He won you back. <laughs> um, Earl, who are you picking for, to win best director for that? I'm going with Martin Scorsese. And it's minus seven. Remember that. <laughs> so whatever the votes are, minus seven for Scorsese. 
<laughs> I'll say this. If you take Todd Phillips, you get plus 14. That seems oh, like wow. uh, something to jump into. Can he cover? Yeah. <laughs> I think Todd Phillips is probably the big surprise there, right? Yes. Yeah. Also, the surprise, uh, and even though they are white, um, the Safdie brothers did not get nominated for director or writers. No. And no Adam Sandler and no Eddie Murphy. I, and those two, you know, yeah. we could have had a, two giant comedians in there. Uh, I was really, really surprised and just disgusted by that. Particularly, you know, if you tell me that they didn't uh, pick Uncut Gems for Best Picture or Best Director, I wouldn't be so shocked only because it's the kind of movie that the Academy doesn't get. But what they normally get is a performance like Adam Sandler's. You know what I mean? Normally, that's the kind of movie that you would see uh, best original screenplay, and then I would have thought at least uh, the nomination for Adam Sandler. Well, here's two things that happen, I believe. Number one, this is a, this just isn't a contest on merit, but it's basically a political campaign uh -huh. that you have to run. And Hollywood, this is how this is literally the Hollywood insiders, all yes. different kinds from everything that you do. Adam Sandler never does anything for the Academy, right? Mm -hmm. He's never come out and hosted, or you know, sure. what I mean, he makes a point of saying, you know, I don't care. What he doesn't like the, to dress up, yeah, you know what I mean? He's um, not going to put on a suit. And the same thing is true of Eddie Murphy. Neither one of those guys has ever tried to play nice, mm -hmm. and then you're going to try to win the popularity contest yeah. with, you know, the kids, the smart kids at school. It's like being in school. If you're the stoner, you know, they're not necessarily going to, that teases people, you're not necessarily going to win class president. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what happened here. Also... This is a smaller production company, A24. Although I think they did do a great job with Lady Bird a couple yes. of years yeah. ago. But like you said, this is a hard sell. This is not a pleasant movie to watch. Right. It's a tense movie about unbearable people. Yes. And while like to me, it's so far of what I've seen, it's my personal movie of the year. It's the kind of movie I would never expect to get a ton of of attention from the Academy, but I thought for sure that you were going to see. I think Sandler. this. I think this movie is like Fight Club. It's mm -hmm. going to be one of those movies that didn't get you know the love when it came out, but as the years went by, people, people watched it right. and loved it and all that kind of thing. When Fight Club came out, the people were like, "Well, this is a terrible movie. This is." Uh, morally corrupt right. movie to make because it does end with basically a 9-11 sure. from a white guy point of view. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, like yeah. the white guy is doing their own 9-11. And, you know, that sticks with people. And this was uh, a movie about an immoral person in an immoral business with immoral friends and immoral customers. I mean, yes. it was bad, yeah. you know, from that point of view. Couldn't take your eye off of it. These two yeah. kids, the Safdie brothers, are going to be making movies for the rest of your Absolutely. life. Absolutely. You know? And I didn't see a uh, good thing when it came out. Somebody, good time, yeah. Good time. Somebody described it to me. Oh, your brother. And I'm like, I wouldn't want to see that movie. And then I watched it after this movie. Yeah, same. I think it's probably better than Uncut Gems. I think I prefer yeah. Uncut Gems, but I think that Good Time is also fantastic and also a stomach ache. Like yeah. the whole time, my stomach, I was just like, now, oh, the anxiety. You, did you see the movie after you met the Safdie I kid? did, yeah. So. I was shocked at Benny Safdie's performance in Good Time. Shocked, like jaw dropped. Now you had explained to me, you're not going to believe when you see this I thought he was a mentally ill person. Yeah. And I couldn't even imagine that he was acting. Also, uh, like mentally challenged, but also seemingly physically intimidating and yes. scary in the film. And then you meet him and could not. Sweetheart, have smart, been... brilliant, loves film. Yeah. Those two kids are great when they stepped in here. All right. So 
That is a legitimate snub, particularly, I think, to Sandler, because you don't expect the young guys to be welcome with an open arm. Sandler's been out there for fucking 35 years making hits, and this was a chance for them to say, great job. We all expected this to happen. Mm -hmm. Literally, I thought we would debate whether or not you should reward someone or punish him for how lazy he normally is. (laughs) You know what I mean? Because you're like, same, well, he could be a great actor. Right, exactly. Um, He just doesn't want to be. The other shock, I think, for people for best actor um, lead would have been uh, Robert De Niro. A lot of people are shocked that he didn't get the nomination. I don't mean, the thing is you're competing against Robert De Niro when you're Robert De Niro. Yes. And that wasn't one of his great roles. Who did they, who did they, uh, give this to who's the nominations uh for actor joaquin phoenix for the joker adam driver for marriage story leonardo dicaprio once upon a time in hollywood antonio banderas for pain and glory and jonathan price for the two popes i didn't see the two popes i I did not see the two popes uh there are a lot of people think that antonio banderas could take this Mm -hmm. i haven't seen that movie um I think the Joker, Joaquin Phoenix, is one of those things where you're like, you're a great actor. Here's our chance to honor you. I think he's got to be considered a front runner. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's trying. He did 60 Minutes last night. Right. He was walking around his house with Anderson Cooper. Had his mom on TV with Anderson Cooper. Talked about his brother dying with Anderson Cooper. He he never has done shit like that before. Yeah, he does not normally play that game. And then when uh, Anderson Cooper said to him, what do you do in between movies? What are you doing? He's like, well, I like to, do you really care? <laughs> and, you know, go, Why am I telling you this? <laughs> this Anderson great. Cooper's, no, I don't care. No, just skip it. Though. I realize it's a dumb fucking thing. I don't care. Um, so who would you take out of that and put in De Niro? Where would you put, yeah. who would you take out and, and put in Adam Sandler? Um, I Somebody's got to go because, like, I didn't see Pope's, I, and I didn't it see seems stupid, Pain though. and Glory. I oh. say take out Driver, take out Price, right. put in Sandler, and uh, I'd I'd take out yeah. DiCaprio before I took out Driver. Really, you yeah. didn't think wow. DiCaprio was good? No, I thought he was great, but. Uh, honestly, I don't even know why I'm saying this because uh, Joaquin Phoenix. I just I don't think that his performance was enough to save that movie. I don't think I enjoyed it on the level that everybody else did because I was so floored about what a bad movie it was that I don't know if I could just say that he his performance saved it. For I me. will tell you this: Joaquin Phoenix has deserved seven Oscars already. I agree with that. Give him this fucking Oscar. Give it to him. Just like you gave Leonardo the Bear Oscar when who the fuck? Right. You know that I mean? movie was fucking awful. Yeah. Of course. All right. Over to the women. It seems like nobody's winning anything uh, but Judy in that. Yes. Uh, I think that. Renee it's... Zelliger. Yeah. Saoirse Ronan is up there for Little Women. Um, um, she's the only one that I, I really like. Scarlett. Uh, probably has been around long enough that they want to give her one. I don't even know what Harriet is. And Theron, Charlize Theron has already won an Oscar. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, you don't feel so bad. Harriet Harriet was the Harriet Tubman movie. Yeah. Harriet! Sweet Harriet! Which I don't know. I haven't heard anyone say great things about that movie. Earl was mad about the movie because they made the the black guy the bad person and the white (laughs) slave owner the good person. (laughs) Um, I think another snub here would have been Aquafina, um, for what was it, the final goodbye, the last goodbye. This is she oh, plays yeah. a serious role. It is a serious role. Yeah, she's great, she's and really... I would try to. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen her get up there. It would have been a nice little yeah. chance for this fucking Oscars too white. I know. Sure, and uh, and it would have been just that. It would have been a nomination because I think. There's no way the Academy doesn't uh, give it to Zell Wigger. There's, She's already won one, though. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know, but they I mean, love is she really shit. a two fucking Oscar person? Not no, me, she's no. not. No, she really isn't. I'm I saw cr- this movie. She's yeah. in every scene. Okay. It's a ridiculous thing. You know what I mean? But she's good in it. Oh, I mean, I don't know what Judy Garland was going around acting like all the time. How hard is it to go out and work an hour and a half a night? You know what I mean? They were acting like the struggles of going out and singing these songs. And I'm like, that's what people do. Yeah. She did it. She fucking knocked it out of the park. What's the big deal? Dark Horse, Scarlett Johansson takes it. 
for Marriage Story. I mean, I I liked her in it. I just don't think that they are going to give it to her. Over. It's not that kind of role. She's she, also nominated for supporting this year. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Let me see if I can find that. So you got Laura Dern in uh, Marriage Story, which is a fucking joke. Margot Robbie, who people like in Bombshell. I don't know who Florence Pugh is, Little Women. Scarlett Johansson, Jojo Rabbit. And Kathy Bates uh, for Richard Jewell. I heard she's amazing mm-hmm. in it, but nobody she saw that She plays Richard Jewell, which is uh, unbelievable. <laughs> Good for her. <laughs> Do, 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 um, do. Supporting looks like actor. A, looks like it's going to be a watchable show, though, right? Yeah, supporting actor. I feel like I have my personal pick, yeah. but I don't know where it's going to go. But hey, to me, it's Pesci and the Irishman. Uh, here's my thing here. So here's the supporting actors: Brad Pitt, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Al Pacino, The Irishman, Joe Pesci, The Irishman, Tom Hanks, Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. By the way, this is his first nomination in 19 years. He's won two. He won them back to back. Uh, this is his first nomination in 19 years. That's what they said. I'm yeah. shocked by this. He's somebody I feel in my head. If you ask me, I'm like, I don't know. He's probably every other year. This would have been in my assumption. Mm-mm. Also, how is he supporting role in a movie? Because it isn't about him. It's about the writer. I didn't yeah. see the movie. Oh, I didn't realize. Okay. And this is all he had to do. It's a beautiful day. And then I mean, I could have done, done that. That's what he gets nominated for? Yeah. Give me a fucking break. He should have fucking won for that fucking when he was making out with a soccer ball. <laughs> <laughs> and Anthony Hopkins and the two popes. Anthony Hopkins seems like he's he the other it. pope, I guess. Yeah. Just well, two of them. Mm-hmm. One of the two dopes. He's got, less, <laughs> he's got less to do than the other Pope, though. The other Pope stays very busy. I think you got to give it to Brad Pitt. He did the same thing I was talking about before. He's a movie star that's carried movies for 30 fucking years. Uh, this is your first chance to really honor him. I think in a political way, Pitt, but if I look at the performance, I feel Pesci. I like to see Pacino get it. I like to <laughs> Would see you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be fucking nuts. Wow. <laughs> that was going to go to Joe Pesci. Here's the thing about Joe Pesci. They had to fucking beg him to do this. Yeah. So now I'm going to give you an award. They're, they're not giving <laughs> Joe Pesci another Oscar. It's not going to happen. Because they don't want it to be an even shorter thank you speech. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <is> how <laughs> so Brad Pitt was great in that movie. He was my favorite thing in that movie. Yeah, yeah I would agree with that, too. I mean, he I mean, killed like, the fuck out of some of those people. Yeah. <laughs> also, when he was up on that roof, guys, remember? He yeah. took his shirt off. Fucking hot, yeah. I'd Haunted. give him an Oscar for that. <laughs> Fucking dad. The Oscar's other big so thing, sexy. <laughs> the other one that they uh, left off was Beyonce for best song. And oh, interesting. They gave the thing of Too Black. <laughs> wow. Uh, I did see a lot of people tweeting that they were upset that uh, Jennifer Lopez was not nominated. I didn't see that movie. You did. I didn't get the impression that she was Oscar nomination worthy. I I walked out on that movie and I saw it at my house. So I walked outside. As the opening weekend of that movie, everyone's saying she's going to get an Oscar nominee. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why. She makes... That movie... And it's nothing against her personal, it's just, but you can't take these sex workers, right? Yeah. That are drugging men and fucking stealing $100,000. This actually happened. And then make their routine look like they're the LA fucking cheerleaders. You know what I mean? They look like the dance. So weird. They, they, they did not put in the, not even just the sexuality, but the dirty sexuality. Right. Of that business. There's no way guys would spend that kind of money for this PG rated act. Right. Just a lack of research, or do you think just like no balls? I, th- I, I think they decided we don't want to turn off women. All th- yeah. They thought to themselves, Let's, women are the ones that are going to want to see this right, film, and not it men. It won't be empowering right. if you see what they actually put on the line there. Right. Hmm. I mean, I literally don't even think there was a grind in this fucking movie. That's a fucking Just disgrace. People po- I mean, they look like Charlie's Angels. <laughs> um, another one, another snub I saw people were tweeting about. It's not something maybe we would care about. People seem very upset 
that Frozen 2 was not nominated. I guess people really enjoyed Frozen 2. They thought it should have got a nod for the uh, animation. My thing is that song, Let It Go Again, mm -hmm. so fucking good. <laughs> Let it go right. again. <laughs> Let it go again. You picked it back up, but now you need to let it go. All right, here's my solutions for this, for the cartoon. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let's just let child actors vote, nobody else. Once you're over it's 12, you choice. can't. Yeah. Yes, you can't yeah. vote anymore. And those people have to get slimed, no matter what's happening. Cool. <laughs> Way I like cool. that. Yeah. Um, Toy Story 4 was nominated. I, I wonder if it's going to win. we've made enough Toy Stories, haven't we? No. I they mean, I saw, I saw the third one. It seemed like there was a, a nice bow at the end of this. I can't believe they felt the need to make another one. I like when he ran off the cliff and then didn't know it until he looked <laughs> down and then he fell. Classic. <laughs> I've never seen one Toy Story. Maybe I'll start with Toy Story 4. Work your way backwards. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this animation's getting a lot worse. I saw that uh, I, uh, somebody was saying that there was, like, Parasite is breaking some sort of record. Is it about, like, a foreign film and yes, the I amount of so. nominations yeah. it has? Yeah. Foreign film for uh, Best Picture and then Best Also Foreign Film. I think it's the first time that's happened in South Korea for a South Korean film. Yeah. That makes sense. Because I think ten times it's happened with North Korea. It's <laughs> <laughs> they just keep churning them out. Yeah. <laughs> One is about uh, Kim Jong Un winning the Olympics every, all by himself. Every uh, every uh, event. Well, what actually did any movie get that a beautiful beautiful life or something? Beautiful mind. Beautiful. No, not beautiful mind. It was the Italian. It's life one. is beautiful. Life is beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I know he won Best uh, Actor that but year, which was, was a, a giant mistake. Yeah. And, you know, it's one of those pictures that when you go back and watch it, you're like, oh, I really just got caught up in, in this, this oh, bullshit I hate thing. That shit. I mean, they purposely make you use comedy to make you cry. Yeah. Yeah. And I did. I'll admit it. Yeah. I mean, I was quite emotional. I hate you were also a child. I was a baby. Yeah. This and I was like pretty much like I could be that son. <laughs> Just realizing you got caught up, like I like that Birdman movie. I saw it in theaters, though it was great. And then I watched it again. Like this is not good. This a lot of fucking... people were under the Birdman spell. Fuck that movie. I didn't get it at all. I I, I tried to watch it on TV. Could didn't even bother finishing. I think I just got. I just really liked the uh, tracking shot they did for fucking like three quarters of the movie. That's why I don't want to watch 1917 and think it's good because it's one long track. Did you see shot. Birdman, Gil? I did see Birdman. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, it doesn't feel like a they they were true to making a play or yeah, any that's, of that. I think that was probably where I felt very distant from it is it did not feel like theater to me. It was just uh, ridiculous. I think there was maybe like some good moments in it, but I, I know I that there were one. people who were like, this is the best movie to come out in a super long time, and I just didn't People are it. stupid. People yeah. are alcoholics. Most of these people who watch movies are drunk alcoholics. I should be on the goddamn Academy voting then. Chris, you are. You just what? keep forgetting the vote. Please, get the vote out there. Rock the vote. Now, has anyone seen any of the best documentaries? Some years I've seen every single documentary, and I think... Can I just I say seen... this? There's too many documentaries to watch. Yeah, anymore. I think it's... Netflix puts out 32 documentaries a day. Most of them are about aliens who used to live on Earth. <laughs> That's not even nominated. Yeah. They're putting out a 10-part uh, Jordan doc soon, too. Like... Well, that's good because we know nothing about Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Ten more hours of Jordan. What did he do? Play basketball? I think so, yeah. Baseball, too. Yeah, well, I don't think you could technically say he played baseball. <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard of one of these documentaries. Yeah, me either. Might have heard of The Cave, but that could mean anything. Uh, I was thinking that, too. But then I was thinking, maybe does it sound like that documentary from years ago when the um all the... All the dolphins were getting rounded up. That was the this. cove. Okay. That's close. Very close. Just a letter difference. I pick this one then because it's so close to the cove. <laughs> I feel bad for the dolphins, so I picked the cove too. So. Oh, this is about Syrian civil war. I'm uh, picking this one. I'm going to be out uh, at the stand tonight with a bunch of great comics. and uh, This is Moon Tower at yeah. the stand tonight. Yeah. It's happening tonight at 7.30 p.m. Featuring Matt Bearden from the Dudley and Bob with Matt Show. He's coming in later today. Cool. Jessica Curson, Dan Soder, Big J. Okerson, Dolce Sloan, 
Adrian Iappolucci, Stavros Alkias, Stavi Baby, Abby Rosenquist, and more, and Ron Bennington, the standnyc.com for tickets. And I'm going to correct you on this because I've been saying Dolce Sloan. She pronounces it Dolce like Dulce. Spanish way. Mm. I've been saying it Italian way, like you, Chris. Quite frankly, I don't even think we needed to say her name. If we say <laughs> me, Big J, and Soder. And the rest. And Jessica Curson. Mm hmm. I think that's the, you know, we don't have to, oh, Adrian Appalucci, of course, mm -hmm. from The Degenerates, where some people believe she stole the show. Yeah, it was, uh, it was great. Really, really great. I thought Bobby Kelly stole the show because yeah. I'm on a tour with him, and Jim <laughs> Norton stole the show because I work with him. <laughs> <laughs> I think they all stole the show. Everyone stole it from each other. One would steal it, and the other one would steal it back. Everyone's uh, just as good as everyone else. Uh, Chris, did you, can you play the theme for that uh, that they have for tonight's show? I don't have it. Well, I know it off the top of my head. Oh, good. I'm telling jokes for the moon tower. Moon tower, moon tower. Lots of funny jokes for the moon tower. Moon tower, moon tower. Earl lies every time he speaks. You got busted today, buddy. B Let's let it go. B busted how? Uh, what do you, why? Okay. The, the, it's, one, it, it's one thing. How, though, Chris. It's one thing to fucking. You never once explain what your yeah, beef what was. Yeah, what is the problem exactly it's with what, getting them all wrong? It's one thing to lie, but to not realize you lied and, I mean, and say Chris, no big deal Chris, when you're just giving out these Chris, fucking picks that people depend Chris, on. what did I say at the beginning? You said you got some bad intel. I said... I didn't know what I was doing. That's a lie, Earl. What you're saying is you didn't take the time you to said, do your job. If you said, first you said I had the point spreads wrong, and I said, okay, if I, that's where I said I had bad intel. If I read a bad line sheet, then that's my fault. And, and, okay. I didn't go by your sheet or whatever. You know, I didn't go by that lump. There particular was line. no difference between the sheets. Yes. I read it. I, I read it. And I went with it, and I and if it was wrong, I was wrong. I am wrong. If it was wrong, I was wrong. If Again. if it was wrong, why don't you just say, "I don't know shit about sports spreads," and that about, I thought I did. It's me. Why yeah. are you yelling at me? Wait, wait. You how would you think that you did? You just explained to us that you knew nothing about it. You said again and again. I've told you guys I knew nothing about it. Now you're saying you thought you did. This is the kind of reason where people end up. Doing 20 years in jail. Yeah. Uh, when I, when I, they're being interviewed and they change their story yeah. constantly. Gotta have consistency. Earl, why don't you do it this way? If picking you is wrong, I don't want to be right. Earl has the consistency of my shits. <laughs> That's not consistent at all. Ew. No, Ron, it's not. <laughs> you're you are right, Chris. Your, your picks were consistent this year. Oh, See, he's fuck, getting you, fuck you. You, you want to fucking? He got at you, least Chrissy. I got the fucking base. Fucking, I got the information correct to give people my fucking now, Chris, thoughts. Because yeah. one reason, Chris, because you yeah. care about your job. That's, That's right. no reason to brag. I care, Ron. Earl doesn't, obviously. Earl just fucking steps steps in front of a fucking chain link fence and fucking talks gibberish for thirty seconds and says, "Ooh, I did a good job." Yum. That's what he fucking says. He does. You know what Earl's new theme song is? What's that? Ooh ee, ooh ah ah, ooh ee, walla bada bing bang. I don't know. I just want you guys to get along. That's the only thing I ask. I would love That's that. That's all he wants. I would love to be able to get along, but if Earl keeps lying like a fucking dick, it's he not going to happen. Lying like a dick or lying like a rug? <laughs> He's a dick and he lies. Let's let Vito decide which one of you is right. Okay. Vito, you've had enough opportunity to listen to your two co-workers mm -hmm. discuss this, this. You don't really, I wouldn't say that you're a fan of either one of them. Am I correct with that? <laughs> no, I hate so, them both. So that makes him an impartial <laughs> yes. judge. So judging on the facts and the facts only, who was right and who is 100% wrong? Judging on the facts... I gotta go with Earl being wrong because oh. if you look at point systems, I didn't know what points were one day. Somebody told me what they were, and I figured it out pretty easily. And now I've been crushing the sports betting game ever since. <laughs> it's yeah. not a difficult concept. It yeah. really isn't. 
um, just the plus and the minus thing is the um, kind of lays it out. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah I get it. An plus means that they are not favored. Minus <laughs> means they're favored. See, it's it's confusing at first because you would think minus is a negative. <laughs> But here, he's it's breaking not. it down for you, Earl. Pretty easy. Earl, you understand now. And even he's relating to you and saying he thinks what you did was wrong. But here's the other thing, Vito. Do you think Earl made an honest mistake or completely lied? I think he completely lied, and I think he doubled down on it when he started blaming the Viacom slash CBS company. <laughs> Please don't even bring them up again. <laughs> I'm sorry. They've been on through enough gambling problems this year. <laughs> Finally, Vito and I can agree on something. Earl's I know. a fucking liar. I mean, you know that this is real because the two of them are never a united front. No. And you know, there's another lie that Earl threw out. It was last week that I noticed. Hmm. So last week, I went to go get you coffee, Ron and Gail. Hmm. Thanks. And then I came back up, and then Earl said something like, they hook me up there at the coffee place. Yeah. Yet, I got there they got the coffee, brought it back over in the same exact time. Yeah. Earl gets the coffee every single day. And more evidence, Vito went down to get coffee the next day, same exact time. Which leads me to believe Earl lies about getting the about, hookup. About getting the coffee. Where, where, was there a line? Yes, there was a line. Because when there's a line, they see me and they get, they give me the number two. They go two. Ew, they give you the number two. They, no, they just like you? they just go like two. Don't let two them la- shit in my I, coffee, please. Because I, you know, I go every day. They see me every day. Okay. And they go two, and I'm like, yeah. And... Can I tell you something, Chris? Yes. Unlike you, yeah. Earl's been doing the most darling thing. That is, he attempted to pay the tip out of his own pocket. I, yes. Where you never did, yeah. and Earl, I did. Do you think I covered you, or you need more money? You more than cover me, Ron. Thank you. Maybe he doesn't pay the tip then. That's what I was wondering. Is, I d- I was there does. a difference in when they brought back the chain from when Earl brought 100%. There was a difference. Chris uh, charges extra money, and that's why I'm like, wait, what does see. it cost this? And then Earl told me, well, I, pay the, I give them $2, which he tried to say, no, 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 it's the way they treat me, not you. Right. And I go, that's very sweet, but you wouldn't even be down there. True. I don't want that cost them two bucks a day. Uh this Chris is, Stanley wouldn't give me the fucking sweat off his balls. I, I'd give you that and more, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> more than the sweat? What else? See, what's going on here? Uh, I, John Tolman said this. Okay. Chris telling Earl he doesn't know shit about sports spreads is pretty ironic. <laughs> Look, I know how to read the fucking spreads. Ed said this. Again, Chris picking five <laughs> games right this season. How is he angry at Earl? Um... <laughs> Chris says he would love to get along and ask Earl, why are you yelling at me? How delusional can he be? You're losing this in the in the popular fucking vote out there. I'm surprised that yeah, people are taking uh, Earl's side over this. Earl lies. He doesn't know what he's doing. You're repeating, though. And uh, to my other point, I bet Earl doesn't tip anyone when he goes to get coffee. I don't believe that. You think he, he's not giving any tips? I think he's not giving any tips. You never give any tips either when you're voting. <laughs> well, at least we've worked this out where I think we're in a place that we all agree. Yeah. You know? I think We're so. all on the same page. Um, you know what? I just want to ch- I change the mood a little, a little something positive. Yeah. Remember, uh, on your birthday, I said I had ordered something that didn't come in yet. Mm-hmm. It's finally come in. I thought my present was Connect Four. Yeah, that was the um, the very last minute present to make up for the fact that your present was on the way. So you did get a nice Connect Four. Wow. I'm not gonna lie, that didn't set me back much. Uh, it was a very last minute gift. This, however, was the gift that I ordered well over a month ago, and it took forever. But finally, it is here. Don't let me reach in. Soft. It is soft. It is. I mean, you know, like how you like soft stuff, right? Oh my God! A beautiful, beautiful soft thing. Yeah. What is this called? Uh, it's like a throw. It's like a blanket. Um, it's good. Now let me step back and show you what is on the blanket. My favorite dog in the world? <laughs> you got me a birdie blanket? I'm going to be wrapped in birdie every night. I mean, 
could she look cuter on that thing? It's ridiculous. Vito, come over and get a birdie picture with us, and we'll put it right up. I mean, this dog. That's a beautiful blanket. Chris, while we're doing that, yes. uh, could you uh, plug Moon Tower tonight? Of course. The Moon Tower at the Stan Comedy Club here in New York City. It's happening tonight, 7.30 p.m., featuring Matt Bearden from the Dudley and Bob with Matt Show. He'll be on the show later today. And Ron Bennington, Jessica Curson, Dan Soder, Big J Okerson, Dulce Sloan, Adrian Iappolucci, Stavi Baby, Abby Rosenquist, they'll all be on the show, and more, The Stand, NYC.com, for tickets. Why so many? It's a big show. I gotta admit, when I was picked for this, I'm like, this is really an honor. <laughs> They're like, oh, you're gonna own after Stavi and Abby. Send that to me, uh, Vito. That's the best present I ever got in my life. <laughs> well, the thing I got from Chris and Vito, did you guys uh, jump in together on my birthday present? Well, I got you cigars. That was on me, Ron. Well, that was Christmas. I did not. I don't have a birthday present for I you. I do have a gift here for you that, that came late. <laughs> if I could run and grab it. Please do. This is great. It's like a whole birthday, <laughs> yeah. birthday day for you. Could you put that back in my bag? I will. So I don't get you it don't dirty. Forget it. Dude, I was just happy enough to have a nice soft blanket. I know. It's so soft. That's the greatest present ever. <laughs> Wait till Birdie sees me with that. I know. Birdie goes crazy when she sees me. She's so excited. Honestly, I was thinking, I feel like she needs a pop blanket. It's like she's oh, your biggest fan. I love that. <laughs> Vito's running to get his present. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Moonlighting. Seasons, the show I never saw. Seasons one and two. I ordered it on eBay before Christmas. It's really hard to track down. Wow. Oh, look, their, their faces are in 3D. Really cool cover. Yeah. And then if you like it, I mean, like, you know, I'll, I'll buy the rest of the seasons <laughs> for different events. Uh, yeah. Chris can do that since he <laughs> missed this. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. And Ron, what'd you get me for my birthday? My special uh, day. Uh, um, unfortunately, I did not get anything, Ron. Right. You know, we all know that this is a uh, Ron's special birthday that we celebrate. Here's the thing that happened, right? Uh, a listener was walking through New York, Washington Square Park, and was taking a video. And as they were walking along, they saw me, yelled, and then I waved and came over to them. And they sent the video, and I'm like, oh, can I put this up? And they said, yeah, don't use my name, and then I tried to put music with it, but then I understood something. I'm not good at that. <laughs> that could be a good present if somebody would ever yes. want to do that. Let me, let me give it to me, Ron, please. No. But why, why? It seems why more should like you... an Earl thing. But Earl doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Earl is the fucking gambling chief of this show. <laughs> he's definitely not the gambling chief. I didn't know that was a position here. Yes. yes. We have gambler gambling. in chief. D dude, that's not me saying that's serious XM. Oh, wow. And Pandora. A lot of these uh, things are going to end up on Pandora when we're done. Are they playing the Unmasked on Pandora? Yes, that is available on The it. same ones? Or do we add ones. news? Uh, uh, new ones are being sent. Why aren't I involved in that? I would love to meet the person from Pandora who's will, in charge of this. We will. We will meet them. And figure... Why are we involved <laughs> I, in this? I, I, not like me, by you. I'm That's... sorry. Because if it was we, you'd already be involved in thinking about this. What's he, what's he done? He was just making sure he sent it uh, so it could go up if we needed. Oh, yeah. What's he pointing at? He doesn't know my address? Mm-hmm. He needed, he needed approval. I won't wait, I don't know if that's... You think this is a good enough picture? He has a different one, though, right? Yeah. Beats, send, a, send the one that you sent over. Would you want this to go up on front page or uh, stories? I feel, I feel like front page. I mean, that's just me personally. <laughs> What's the other one you have? Because we didn't really do a great job of. Vito, can you send him? I'm the other sending one? it right now. I feel like we didn't line it correctly. You can see I know. our height difference. I mean, should we should we line it better for height? Yeah. I mean, I wish I could take my own picture, but you have to have an eye for it, you know. All right. It is. Feel the softness. It's really great quality. I know. It was worth the wait. 
The Christmas Kids Tour with Bob Kelly, Rich Voss, Jim Florentine, and Ron Bennington. That's coming to the Emerald Theater in Detroit, Michigan this Saturday, January 18th. Go to creepswithkidstour.com or creepstour.com for all dates and all tickets. Now, let's make sure it's straight, Vito. It is. Can you see Gail? I can see Gail. And there are standby tickets available for the it's 80 still, Bryant Unmasked. Straight. Oh, on the sides. I was just looking at the top. Oh. Happening this Wednesday, 12 p.m. here at the Sirius XM Studios. Go to at Do you want to switch out with Bennington Chris? Show. Let me no. let me Do jump you in there. Use Gail's phone. So no. it's better. My phone. My it's phone the same. stays the same. Yeah. But he doesn't use it's... portrait the way he does. Make it a portrait, Vito. Go that, go that way. You're like up against the. Chris ran out of plugs, so you can't just keep talking. Well, I've never met Birdie, but I think that's a great facsimile of that young dog's face. He's not that young. <laughs> also, I just realized I don't know, own anything. So I don't own any like soft blankets or anything or soft clothing. Dude, I don't own anything very cozy at all. Two little throw blankets that I got. Out front here for free, but when they were somebody was giving them out, yeah. I use them all the time at my house. It's just something I never think of, like a like something the, warm the and cozy. Like flare out a it looks good. Yeah. I feel like I gotta get more cozier in my life. A what? Like cozy. It's, it's like it's everything. I don't, I don't own anything very soft. I'll Bobby tell you. Bobby Kelly makes fun of me because when. Um, we're sitting around backstage, and there's a nice big couch. I always throw my legs up underneath me, and he says I look like his mom having wine. <laughs> but I do go for comfort. I'll tell you, somebody Just gifted me. Just put a touch me. on that to see if you got anything this uh, nice. Go ahead. What this was get? a game changer for me. Oh, my God. For my yeah. birthday, I got a weighted blanket. Changed my life. Because here's the thing. You have a baby. You're not always going to get the quantity of sleep. I'm getting quality of sleep. Like when I sleep. Where's it weighted? At the bottom? The whole thing. This is a 15 pound blanket. It 15, sounds. 15, 20 pound blanket. So, it sounds like you should be getting an x ray. That's exactly <laughs> what it feels like. 100% correct. It feels like you're wearing a lead blanket that you would have at the dentist. And I'm telling you, I pull that thing up. It's very difficult to do it. Yeah. And I'm out like a light. That's weird. It's amazing. Now, I think that there are some people maybe they don't like to feel confined, and maybe they would feel like, oh, I need more freedom to be able to move around. How hot it's, does it get underneath there? I actually find it to be a very good temperature Could control you summertime situation. it? I think I'm going to continue it in the summer because I'm blasting AC in the summertime. I've been so, leaving my windows open all night during this time that mm -hmm. we're having, even though the White House had snow the other day. And uh, fantastic. I'm going to send this out to the whole fam damnly. Good. And let them see how lucky <laughs> I am with what I'm going to refer to as my birdie bunker. <laughs> now, here's the thing. I don't know whether I'm going to sleep with this or hanging on my wall. Interesting. I wasn't sure if it was going to go in your bedroom or was this going to be like for, uh, you know, binge watching time Yeah. and football. Well, we're running out of football. Mm -hmm. Three games left. Three games left, except for the best game of the year, which is uh, the Pro Bowl. Mm -hmm. Now, they used to do uh, East and West and NFC and AFC, and then they started picking because they're trying to make it better. Yeah, I've had uh, an interesting idea, and I think it could work. Earl, back me up on this. It's blacks against the rest of the world. <clears throat> so you get white people. Okay. Any Hispanics, this is where it fucking helps a little bit. Polynesians. Wow. That's Earl, smart. would you take that on? Yes, I would. But here's the bad part. You're going to have to have a black coach. <laughs> <laughs> Considering there's only, what, three in the league? <laughs> For now. <laughs> For now, yes. <laughs> All those coaches went out. What? You sent to the wrong group. Who do they send it to? All of your work friends. Damn it, because they just start with Gail. You're you're the top of both of those yes. things. <laughs> and it's uh, very confusing. Mm, 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 mm. So what do you think, Carl? 
What do you think your chances are with this? I think they're very good. I, I think the I think the black team would win outright. Of course they would. Hey, uh, except for the black coach, Larry in Long Island. Hey, how you doing, gal? How's it going, Larry? I'm doing well. I know exactly what you're talking about. My wife has two of those weighted blankets, and I cannot deal with it. It feels like someone's laying on top of me, ch- choking me, and she loves it. Do you think that it's something maybe like a gendered thing? You think women would like a yes. weighted blanket sensation more than a man? I don't like the sound of it at all. Yes, I, I think so. I think it sounds great, but I've never tried it. But I do like like when they get a weighted blanket for an x-ray. I, I it takes the you know I don't know if it's like I'm a toss and turn kind of person. Mm-hmm. It just is like settle. It just settles you, and I'm out. And I feel like I could be crazy, but I feel like I get to deep sleep much faster. faster. And that's the issue. Like your body isn't like waking yourself up. I don't have that issue at all. I can just fucking lay down and go to sleep. It's very strange. You've never had a problem being awake. Um, I've had I've been in, I've had like. Uh, bouts of it but in general i can just lay down and go to sleep so no matter what's going on in your life you could be stressed you could be like he's just an alcoholic coming off of he's fucking pass out sleep he's pissing himself i mean when you don't wake yourself up to piss why would you <laughs> why would anything keep yeah, you up that's true. that is very true man i was thinking about this last night i had totally forgot how often i was having to wake up to piss when i was pregnant and that was like a part of my life Welcome to my world. <laughs> like, I could never sleep for more than, like, two hours. I was b- back up again. Remember how much I had to pee during the show? I it was, was constant. I was, like, 30 minutes into the show, and I would be like, I gotta... Yeah, I we to finally pee. we just go, go pee. Just forget it. We can't keep breaking on my schedule. Yeah. And yeah, I would, like, was... get here and have to run to the bathroom Dude. immediately, and then 30 minutes later... You had a baby on your bladder. Yeah. She was yeah, a little right baby on your brother. So, what do we want to write for this? Oh, your brother's so excited about that thing and wants <laughs> one. All right, everybody wants one. Hey, Stanley in Missouri. Hey guys, those weighted blankets were first started use um, for people with autism, uh, especially children. Mm-hmm. It was like a comfort thing for them, and. Uh, you could, you know, you could add different amount of weight and stuff to them. I used to work with developmentally disabled children, and that was one of the big things that we would use to help calm them down. Yeah, makes a lot of sense because I've heard the pressure is is very comforting. I remember the first time I heard about uh, what's her name, Temple. T- Temple Grandin. Yeah, the first time I heard about her and her work, and then I was like. Wait a second, what is a comforting to autistic people? Like immediately I could relate because that to me is total comfort where some people feel like they don't like pressure. They That's what be... swaddling clothes is. Babies yes. want to be tightened mm-hmm. up. And, you know, autism is always so fascinating to me because me everybody's kind of got the same brain. It's not like something happened. Only their brains work different in some ways and exactly the same in some ways. And that's when people get mad at somebody say I'm a little on the spectrum because that they say that when they find out, oh, my way of thinking is not like everybody else's. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. My way of thinking is completely different than I ever hear people describe. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it would be sometimes frustrating when you were when I was a kid. But now I'm like, I ended up doing stuff for a living right. that use that. If I was good at numbers, believe me, I wouldn't be fucking doing this. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'd be fucking running numbers. You'd be like uh, Earl. Earl. Yeah, exactly. No. Earl's picking the fucking games and somehow getting extra points for the favorite. He knows pluses, minuses, he and whatnot. It. He does not. He doesn't even know whatnot. <laughs> Kevin in New York. Hi. Hey, Kevin. I, I think a weighted blanket would be great because it, it would Reminds me of my, when I was a kid, my grandma had old handmade quilts from, she was from Kentucky, and they weighed like 300 pounds, and when they'd put you in bed and you couldn't move, the, the things were so heavy, and you'd sleep like a log. See, yeah, that's the thing. It's like you go out like nothing. And I would agree, those like old blankets, like any like old knit blanket has like a little extra weight to it. 
Um, a lot of people saw this on stories first, the bad picture, because it got thrown up there first. Mm-hmm. I would wish some of those people would go back and write nice things about my blanket on the front page <laughs> Please. on Instagram. Because I like people to say stuff like, great blanket. Or, you're going to be really happy with that blanket, Ron. <laughs> or, where'd you get that blanket at? It's fantastic. <laughs> that blanket looks or, soft. Or, this would be my favorite, what a beautiful dog. Oh, oh yeah. I mean... She she could not be sweeter. I would love to see this. No wonder you love that dog, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> now you see it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because somebody might hear it and just think, oh, what? She's just a dog. No. As you can see from this blanket, she clearly isn't. <laughs> no, she's more than a dog. She's a hero dog. She saved Gail and the baby. Mm-hmm. She did. Something Chris never has done. I mean, I, I, I would... I, I know, I know ba-ba, that's, tr- ba-ba, that's true. I know ba-ba, I have. No, you, you have it and you never would. When you stutter like that, yeah. I fucking forget that you made the studio your bitch today. <laughs> you really did. You fucking turned it over. You spanked it. Yeah. Turned it into you a little slut. You spanked this bitch. <laughs> spanked this bitch's ass. <laughs> this bitch has been called, I mean, this uh, studio has been calling you daddy, I noticed. <laughs> Earl calls his, says that he owns the betting world. That's his bitch. Mm-hmm. You made the betting world your That's bitch? That's a delusional thing to say. Well. We're all delusional, Chris. Let's not forget that. Plus, he's extra tip guy. You you take the tips out of my money? I, and then you, <laughs> I mean, he's then you turn around selfless. You, you forget, and <laughs> yeah. then you won't even put it together a nice music video for me? I would love to put together a Here's nice music video. Yes. I, I kind of feel like... Uh, now I don't even think I want to do it. Give it to me. Let me see what I can do. Um, I don't really trust you. <laughs> you should trust me. You can't blame him for not trusting you. I guess, yeah, that's a good point. Jeremy in Buffalo. Hey, what's up? Yeah, I was going to say, like, I don't know where it started, but they, they also use those blankets and that for, like, animals, like, for anxiety, like, fireworks and that. Like, yeah. Depression. Yeah, they call them thunder shirts. Thunder! <laughs> thunder! <laughs> And when I saw, when I first read about them, I was like, why don't they make, th- this is before I knew a weighted blanket existed. And I was like, I'd like a thunder shirt. <laughs> yeah, like to go too. to bed in a nice thunder shirt. Now, um, we're going to do the comedy stuff of the decade. Whereas, uh, do you have the answers, Big Chris Stanley, or do I, I have to get I them? believe you, you were sent the answers, but I can get them. I don't know. Just like everything else, I'll have to do it myself. You always do. Yeah. I got to do everything myself. Oh, 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 oh. Thunder. All right. Um, all right. There's an enemy of the year, but I'm going to do of the decade. Uh, well, first of all, let's do comedy movie of the decade. And I believe one of us picked this. And I believe it's Gail. Bridesmaids. Yeah, oh. what is my pick? Got one, finally. <laughs> now, here's the thing with Bridesmaids, and I loved it, but I thought his follow-up, that spy thing, was even more brilliant. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed spy, but to me, Bridesmaids uh, changed the genre. Mm, for the ladies? For the ladies. Well, it's ladies' night, and, and then, the bridesmaids' right. And then men were like, wait, women are funny? I didn't realize. It was the first time I ever thought that women were funny. <laughs> I didn't think it was Cal Burnett or Lucille nope, Ball. Nope, you didn't. Thank you, Paul. Gilda Radner, none of that worked no. for me. And you saw <laughs> these diarrhea jokes on yeah. uh, bridesmaids. We, as a nation, laughed, and we did, no longer saw gender. I'm telling you the truth. It's uh, McCarthy, right? Mm-hmm. Her and Spy, and she was in both. She broke out in Bridesmaids. Yes. So then Spy, they gave her the full thing. I thought she was so fucking incredibly funny. Insanely funny. And both. Yeah. But there was more of her in yes, Spy. Yes, exactly. That was her jam. And, uh, you know, they had a budget. It was shot like an action movie. It was. it was really fucking great. It just looked like what they've always tried to do, a really hilarious action movie. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to go comedy TV show. Uh of all time. Um, and um, Earl, I remember you picked bum, 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 
Sanford and son is here. Here comes Sanford. And his son is here too. Rolo's also gonna make the scene. It was a tie, believe it or not. Wow. Eastbound and Down, which I didn't even know was this decade. It was this decade, yeah. It started this decade? It started in 2009. Ugh. Went to 2013. I don't know. It was my Eastbound pick. and Down. Hope you like this decade. And it tied with Louie. Louis. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I wonder if East Bound and Down should give up the award, considering they were a little early, I feel. But. Yeah, I feel like they were a little early, too. Particularly, I think their funniest was the first season. <laughs> now, um, a thing that could be up, but I guess it came too late in the decade, is Shrill, and I just watched the second season for that. Yeah. It's really good. It's a really good show, It's yeah. really good. And it pays a little less attention to her weight. It's not really about her weight. It's about her. Right. You know what I mean? Sometimes the weight stuff pops up. Right. But but it was more centered on that the first season, this season kind of. Well, when I heard about it and I read stuff, I'm like, I'm not sure this is uh, for me. Yeah. And now I'm reading the book. Mm-hmm. This is a... This is about her, what her life would be like, and, and being big is part of it. Like, you know, me, Chris, Vito, and Earl have all been overweight, mm -hmm. but we don't think about it all that much. Right. Nope. Earl, Chris has never said, I don't think I can go to that party. Nothing fits me. <laughs> yeah. It is. Even though a, he should. <laughs> it's a giant difference between men and yes. women. Wow. Yeah. Men have no idea how overweight they are. And that's the interesting thing, that men can be very overweight and still continue on, where w women can be like 10 pounds overweight, and it's like pointed out. Right. And like made to feel like, mm, is that shirt a good idea? With that? What I like <laughs> is that Adele has now lost too much weight. Yeah, and they can't be happy for her. That. They really can't be happy for her. Yeah, and there's some people who think her weight loss is due to uh, the Royals leaving. Yes, Meg could be. Megxit is that it? Megxit, yeah, mm. that's the uh, new term. <laughs> Megxits. It's time to do comedian of the decade. Do this is huge. Do you remember who you picked, Gil? Uh, I do believe that the comedian I picked was Amy Schumer. Chris, you remember who you picked? I picked Dave Chappelle. Um, Earl, do you remember who you picked? Um, I thought I picked Chappelle. No, I picked Louis C.K. I thought I picked Louis C.K. I can't remember. He can't read You've the never spread. picked a white person in your life, but you just looked at the site and saw that Louis C.K. was comedian of the decade. Wow. wow. No, I'll say this. You didn't pick Chappelle. That's why we're all had to <laughs> jump off. Maybe I picked Burr then. <laughs> Thought I picked Chappelle. No, you didn't. Earl always picks the black person. Yeah. He always picks the That's on Earl's black. thing. He stays on brand. Yeah. And his brand is black. Uh, we had two different things we were going to do before Matt Bearden gets here. One was going to be which one of these is the week. The Weakest Link, mm -hmm. or we were going to go for that other movie one. Which right. one feels... Should we save the movie one since let's we talked a lot of movies Yeah, let's today? save movie All right. and let's go to Weakest Link. Bye -bye. So what we were looking for, like the weakest link in anything. So let's say if you were going to do the weakest link in this show, right. Chris, mm -hmm. what would you pick? I would pick Earl. Right. So that's the definitive answer. Yeah. Sure. What yeah. would you pick, Earl? I would pick Chris. But you have to be honest. <laughs> right. I you really son like, of a bitch. It's just yeah. not that you hate Chris, but you have to be honest. Who would you pick? Honestly, um, I'm 100% brutally honest. I would say I'm the weakest link. Yes. So that's a definitive. We all get that. Sure. Okay. I'm kidding, Earl. You're the fucking strongest link. What? We all lean on Earl. <laughs> lean on Earl <laughs> when he is late and he forgot. All right. Uh, so... 866-844-844. I'm glad we have it up. 844-ROCK-GOD. 844-ROCK-GOD. If you have a show, a movie, a band, that is the weakest link, give us a call. 844-ROCK-GOD. 844-ROCK-GOD. 
for instinct. Mm-hmm. Or if I said the Beatles, who's the weakest link? Ringo. Really? I had Paul. What do you think, Gail? <laughs> uh, Ringo is probably the answer. Paul is what my heart tells me, but it is Chris, Ringo. I would say Ringo. I'm a Paul guy. Are you really? <laughs> yeah. He loves Paul. <laughs> What's your favorite Paul song? I would say uh, when I'm 64. He says... <laughs> He said, he said, uh, he always goes for the cute one. So By the way, like, when I'm 64 would make Paul cringe. He's written so many unbelievable songs. He has. And then you don't know. You were just. I mean, Hey Jude exists. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but his favorite song, when I'm 64. <laughs> mm. Mm. Poor Paul. I know. If I were to say this. To you guys, so I think this is a hard one. Yeah, the Seinfelds, and we're gonna look oh, the four. Okay. I'm not gonna let you guys pick Poppy. Right. I'm not gonna. <laughs> let... <laughs> That's cheating. I was gonna pick Bannon. Who <laughs> love Bannon? <laughs> Although Putty might be my favorite of all time, and I can't believe he hasn't been able to take that to a place where we're all you know proud. Never. Um, Earl, you first. The four, who is the weakest link? I'm going to go Jerry. Jerry was the weakest link. Oh, Fuck. shit. It's named after him, Earl. Yeah. But not his first name. True. They could put any Seinfeld in there. This is fucked up. Chris Stanley. This is fucked up. Uh, I'm going to say, I'll say George. I think George is the show. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, what do you think? I'm going to agree with one of these two people. It's Jerry. Mm. Now, I've heard uh, Jim Norton say it was Kramer before. He doesn't like Kramer, doesn't think Kramer mm. is in reality. And that is true. That's true. Yeah, but, but neither I, is Jerry. Yes. And if you're going just by acting merit alone, you've got to throw Jerry out there. He breaks constantly. I mean, they have to put scenes in there where he's breaking. You know what? I'm going to say this, though. I think it's a tribute to Jerry to say he's the weakest link because it means yes. he went out and didn't just get his friends. Matter right. of fact, he did very little for his friends. <laughs> but he went out and got the best people that he could. I would agree with that. So as a tribute, Jerry. Mm hmm. Yes. In tribute. Um, all right, we'll break. If you guys want to be part of that, 844-ROCK-GOD, mm -hmm. 844-ROCK-GOD. We're right back. Bennington. Took the cellar during the game, and I'm watching on a phone, mm -hmm. sitting in the hallway. And uh, I saw Mike Birbiglia comes by. Hey, Ron, what's up? I haven't seen you in a while. Somebody had uh, just not shown, so instead of getting 15, he got 30, mm -hmm. which is like a rare, fun thing to happen. <laughs> And then, you know, he took off, and I'm like, hmm, Adi didn't ask me what was going on in the game. <laughs> he just missed 30 minutes of the game, saw someone watching the, on their phone. This is not what you would call a big football guy. Weird. <laughs> Vito, give us uh, one that you have for Weakest Link. And do we have the drop the weakest link? Oh, uh, we do not have the drop the weakest mm -hmm. link. The weakest link. Goodbye. Your, your mic's down on. Modern Family. Ooh. Modern Family. All and right. just early seasons. We don't have to talk about the recent seasons. Why? It's gone pretty downhill recent years. You're saying everyone is the weakest link. Yeah. I'm going to say, and this is going to hurt your feelings, the, the one that you like, the smart daughter. Ariel Winter. It's never been a realistic thing that somebody's like a genius. Not realistic. Um, if we're going to current... Uh, season. I feel terrible saying this, Joe. But this is the <laughs> the daughter, the little adopted Asian daughter. daughter. Yeah, she was so funny when she, she was younger. Was so funny when she was younger, and now you see her looking off camera. You can see she's being uh, directed. It, it always takes me out of it. I mean, it's true. She's bad. She's not good. I mean, my pick, similar to yours, for like recent, like if you're looking at overall. Manny, I think, has become the weirdest part of the show. He was the best actor to the worst actor. Yeah, yeah. because he hasn't. His character hasn't changed at all. Like what made him cute as a kid, he's now just a creepy adult. Yeah, yeah that's a problem. Is. That is really problematic. And he's lost his timing. Yeah. Where 
uh, a little kid who's like romantically interested, like he wants to be an adult man and he's like has crushes. Suddenly you're like, hey, Manny, you need to stop stalking people. That's creepy. Oh, that's you have a crush on your aunt. It's weird. Yeah. He raped her. <laughs> Good God. That's Chris, weird that got? he went in that way. Uh, I, I never watched the show, but from the, the clips I've seen, I'm going to say the 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 white guy with black hair. I think no, he's the father of Manny. You're so Phil? wrong. Phil? Oh. Phil is hot fire, and <laughs> okay. everyone knows it. Phil's he's, a fucking legend. By the way, he even got it wrong. He's not... Phil's not Manny's father. Oh, okay. Uh, you're so who's Manny's father? Is that O'Neal? Oh, my God. That's technic. I can't believe that he would say Phil. It's like, yeah, okay, what's your pick? Phil and Cameron? Come on. His dad is, <laughs> his stepdad is Jay, but his actual father, his birth father is um Benjamin Brad. Everybody knows that. I didn't know that. Thank you. Didn't watch the show. The show ends. In a couple months, you better start and catch up. Boy. Uh, that's yeah. a lot. That's Can you sweet. binge it? <laughs> I'll try to binge it. It's yeah. only 24 seasons. I've been binging a uh, succession, so when, once that's done. I'll... I cannot wait for you to be done because I can't really have a conversation. And if we, you were done, we could sit here and go weakest link of succession. Do you feel like you can say that knowing, not knowing the full story so we're far? We're going to do it, even All if right. it's without him. All right. Who you got? Weakest link to me on succession is, I hate to say this because I love everyone, but Shiv. Love Shiv best. She's my number really? one. Really? Like, yeah. I was excited to see her at the Golden Globes. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Shocking, right? Like uh, her, um, her accent. Yeah, I was fucking shocked. Yeah. Chris, who there is... are all Aussies out there in this world, dude. We don't have American actors anymore. I'm gonna say weakest link, Roman. 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 I disagree. I don't think Roman's the weakest link. You think too broad? Mm -hmm. Of a character? I don't think they give him enough. Which one's Roman? The oldest? Culkin. The oh, Culkin. You're drunk. Yeah, dude. he's crazy. You haven't watched the show, obviously, and you haven't watched movies and and television. Yeah. Vito, who you got? I have not watched an episode of Succession yet. Pick one though. The dad. <laughs> no. The dad's great. The mom stinks. Oh yeah. Too, oh, again, Marcia. too too broad. Just too stink. Yeah. All right, so who's your? who do you think is the weakest link of succession? You're going to hate it because he's your favorite, but the oldest brother. Kendall? Kendall, Kendall blows. Oh, my. I am. <laughs> I, I think you're so wrong. I, Can I tell I'm you something? I'm by that actor. Um, Kendall plays a drug addict like somebody who read about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, my God. See, I thought the opposite. There was an early episode, so I don't. I've, Chris, I'm sure you've seen this one already. But where he's really fucked up, he gets fucked up in the desert. Oh, and I feel like it's dudes. so downplayed compared to normally. People would be like, whoa, I'm out of drugs, dude. And I felt like he was more downplayed than normal. Um, all right, let's go over here to Bobby in Charlotte. What's what's up, Bennington? Hey, buddy. Yeah. Um, Jim Norton has officially ruined that show for me with his impersonation of Kieran Culkin. But I would have to say the weakest link is probably Marsha. Oh, you're thinking of Brady Bunch? No, and I Marcia agree with is you. Life. Is it the wife? <laughs> kidding. It's the wife. kidding, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Can we do a little fucking jokes here? I mean, she's she's got no jokes. You know what I mean? That's the problem with Marsha. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Something about sometimes I feel like Shiv could be like a little stiff sometimes compared mm -hmm. to the other ones. Eight four four. Uh, no, stiff. She's flat on, flat on. And I don't care how many tomlets, <laughs> uh, how many Greg shells have to break to make a tomlet. <laughs> I think can we all let's just say who is the best though? Greg. I I picked the one that. Uh, Chris Pick, Kieran Coughlin is the best on the show. Uh, I think Tom. Tom is the best. Tomlet? <laughs> Tomlet. I enjoy Tom a lot. <laughs> um, That's because you have a Tom vibe about you. Do I? All right. I, so I'm going to say uh, weakest link to you yeah. guys, Reservoir Dogs, the ensemble cast. Oh, shit. Mr. Brown. Of Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> 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 and Didn't that gives credit. Yeah. It gives him credit. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Blue. Now let's pick the the actual ones that made it. Jesus. What do you What do you got? Tobacco. No. No, oh, because you were Mr. Blue. It felt like you had something <laughs> in your lip. Bit my do lip. you need a oh. spittoon? 
We got to say the main guys that okay. you know made All it right. back. Okay, I'm right. gonna say Joe then. Joe. I'll say Joe. Is Joe's a great. I know. I, they're the all whole great. Fucking show. Yeah, I mean, he's fantastic. Uh, v- Vito, what about for your weakest link, Reservoir Dogs? I mean, it's it's tough, but I'm gonna go Mr. White just based on how strong the others are. Wow. Who do you I, got? I very much disagree. I'm going, and this is gonna be very unpopular. I'm going Pink because I feel like Bichemi? less. Shemmy. Yeah. Uh, and I'm gonna easily say Mr. Orange. Fuck Mr. Orange. I feel like you're taking this personal. You're not looking at the performance. When they get off with he's telling the story about weed and bringing it up, I couldn't be more bored. And no one ever brings up the black guy who's his boss. You know what I mean? That's how bad that is. No one ever finds themselves talking about that. No. Right. Nobody says, like, that's their favorite scene. And that fucking guy's dressed like he's in Warriors. You ever notice yeah. how fucking stupid he's dressed? Why is he dressed so weird like that? He's supposed to be undercover as well, and that's yeah. his look? He's looking like he's trying to fucking go undercover against the Warriors. Yeah. Maybe you're it's right. Really now you've got scene. me really questioning my answer. <laughs> and that, and, and for, for Orange not to say to him, dude, you got to fucking change. You're Nobody fucking, wears this hat that you're, you're wearing. You're fucking rowing this. Worst narc ever. Uh, let's go to, uh, our buddy Lewis in Manhattan has one. 844-ROCK-GOT if you want to, uh, throw out who is the weakest link. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm going to go with Cheers and, uh, definitely Cliff. I see no point to him. Without Norm, it's like, what's, what's his point? Mm-hmm. I got to tell you, Norm got pretty aggravating to me as the years went by. Too, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. You could also say Sam is terrible. Diane. Diane was, was what I was going to say. Terrible. I think it's I Diane. Diane. I loved her. Loved I, her. I think it's Diane because I think the show gets so much better when Rebecca comes. I think it's a, a, a lot of a lot of people thought that, but in my opinion, no. I, I mean, Kirstie Alley was still good, but um, I, um, I had no problem with her. I, I thought mean, she was funny. I thought, especially with Carla. This might be a little mean, but what about Coach? <laughs> <laughs> that was a one-dimensional character until Woody got there. <laughs> When Coach died, I think he possessed Woody. I think they're like the same guy. Yeah. Uh, Woody went on to have a hell of a career, though, just being yeah. the guy who came on because Coach died. Right. Makes me wonder sometimes. Coach lives? <laughs> Maybe nothing. Right. We never know who Woody Howison is. I think it's Norm, actually, now that we're saying it. I think it is Norm. Yeah, Norm's kind of fucking... He was just a drunk, It's just right? one note. You know what I mean? Well, he was one note. He'd always Low have energy. the joke when you come uh, in. Uh, which is uh, great. All right, I'm going to give you one. Uh-huh. Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore. Who is the weakest link? Why do you got to look it up, Chris? You can't fucking sit here like an American. <laughs> I can't remember all four. <laughs> I know. I know Lincoln's on there. Teddy Roosevelt. George Washington. Fuck. I can't think of the fourth president. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So you're the weakest link. You're the weakest link. I'm giving uh, Lincoln. <laughs> Because <laughs> you don't up. know. For what? Freeing the slaves, it's, you fucking racist? It's Jefferson is the other. Thank you. Jefferson. Mm. Weakest link. I feel like. Jefferson, weakest link for you. I think so. I mean, who are you going to give it to? George Washington. When I found out he didn't even fucking do anything with that tree, <laughs> dead to me. Let's see who we're all wants to get rid of. I hope it's Lincoln. I think it's Washington. Screw George Washington. He owned slaves. So did Jefferson. Yeah, Jefferson did too. Yeah, but he kind of wasn't uh, he one that was always having sex with his slaves too. Or he had that... sex with his yeah. slaves and it didn't even free them when he had the chance. Yeah, he fucking gave birth to slaves and said, "Let them stay slaves." Yeah, I stand by my answer. Yeah, he's really fucked up. He stinks. I'd rather George Washington with those wooden teeth of his. George Birthington's wash day. I like to say. <laughs> I, I'm actually, now that we talk about it, I think we should replace Jefferson. Maybe Trump goes up there. It'd be in the upset special. That. I wouldn't <laughs> mind having Trump up there. I'd like to put up Trump, Obama, Bush, and Clinton. <laughs> All the besties, the ones <laughs> I was here for. We will never do something as stupid as try to carve things that look like people. No, never. In the side of mountains. I mean, maybe a little one. Because let's face it, if we would have had the internet, all this shit would have came out about Washington and Jefferson, you know? If we yeah. would have had the internet, people were like, what? 
You're not putting his how's, face on a mountain. First of all, how's this even popping up? Uh, <laughs> what's keeping this lit up here? <laughs> Are there little fairies inside there? <laughs> Uh, let's go over here to Dan in Toronto. Uh, yeah, weakest link of the 93 Phillies bullpen. Is it David West? I fucking hate you so much, Dan. You're a terrible person and you're a bully and an instigator. Mm, that's you know not what I mean? right. It's like bring, bringing up a fucking rape to someone. How many times do I have to tell you? We never played a series in 1993, ever. Who's on the phones today, Earl? Vito. Take out a knife and stab Vito. <laughs> Justified. I got one. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Breaking Bad, weakest link. Oh my God, to me it's easy. It's easy for everybody. Bitch boy. <laughs> <laughs> so much so, I didn't even watch the movie that came out after. I didn't watch either. I had no interest in it. I read a synopsis of what happened and I think I'm not going to watch this. Uh, Corey and Prince Edward Island. Hey, better say what's up. Hey, hey Corey. Corey, I'm pretty sure Gail's people come from Prince Edward Island. Yes. Hey, was that your people too? Uh, no, no, because it's on her mother's side, the Arsenos. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got you. Arsenos is a big name on PEI. Yeah, uh, I, I've heard that. Yeah. So we've always wanted to go up, and it never. Uh, the summer vacations are so weird yeah. because we have Montreal, and then. But I definitely want to take her up there sometime. You got, you got to tour the Maritime sometime. Yeah, uh, I've, I I stayed a summer in Nova Scotia before. It's fucking fantastic. I love it. Every, everyone always thinks that Canada ends at Montreal. Yeah, I know. <laughs> gorgeous, gorgeous I was, place. I was going to say, the uh, the weakest link in Friends would definitely be Phoebe. Agreed. Wow, disagree, her, strongly disagree. Her story doesn't make any sense. There's it's no fake. consistency whatsoever. Oh, my God. I honestly think that she, Lisa Kudrow is one of the actually funny ones but she's on a show that is in reality and she's singing smelly cat at the thing <laughs> and all of her shit is all magic and stuff yeah when yeah, everybody else is up. a real person i'm shocked by this i mean to me phoebe's one of the best you if could I take to tell you who, to me yeah the weakest link is and you're going to be shocked that i'm going to say this it's monica no I, huh. it's monica monica is the center hub <laughs> She's the reason why they're friends. They wouldn't even know each other without Monica. Their her basis of sense of humor is I'm not fun. I mean, you know what I mean? Like well, that's because she has to because everybody else is. She's the Jerry of that show. But yeah. it is Monica's show. Now here's the thing, Phoebe's a very funny character. She's on the wrong show. She's not fucking bringing the same kind of humor that everybody else is doing. Phoebe, I'm sorry. We have to let you go. Oh my god! And because of that. We have to let Ross go so we can even it out. <laughs> I, I Ross thought sucks. for sure that everybody would have said Ross as their answer. But I think Ross has more jokes than a Monica. Ross is the fucking worst. I mean, every, normally people would say Ross. Ross has got a, a hound dog character, but at least he's got a real job. <laughs> and he's connected to reality. <laughs> uh, John in Philly. What's your weakest link? Hey, guys. Hey, Ben, how are you guys doing? How's it going? Weakest Link. I wanted, I wanted to suggest my Weakest Link would be, uh, I was going to ask Always Sunny, and I think a lot of people are going to go with Dennis, but I think Mac is actually the Weakest Link. Uh, what do you guys think? Uh, Mac is kind of a Weakest Link, but I would have to say Danny DeVito. I know he's <laughs> funny and we all yeah. like him, but that guy is not going to be hanging out with those people. Yeah. No. It's a bit of a jump to shark, isn't yeah. it? And yet it's like a shark everyone loves. They said it's a shark that saved. The thing would have right. been done, but they <laughs> suddenly got a star in there. Um, I would have assumed most people said Dennis or sexist would have said the girl on the show. Dennis is, to me, the a very funny thing that he could get off jokes and be a character mm -hmm. of the exact kind of person that I hate. Right. And you know what I mean? It makes yeah. it work. I think he might be the strongest one on the show, as evidenced by he's the one who got the spinoff. Well, not even a spinoff. They just took him and did the same character, but put it under a different name. Now, different do you think universe. that the reason Mac, like he said, Mac is like, it's just like a lesser than Charlie. It's like Charlie is Mac times 100. Have you ever laughed at Mac? I guess not. I liked when he got fat for a season, but I was just laughing at him being fat. You like that better than when he worked out and got really fucking ripped? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, he seems to be really tied into the physicality. <laughs> Paulie in Niagara Falls. 
Hey, guys. How you doing today? Hey, how's it Good. going, Polly? So who's the weakest link on the Big Bang Theory? Raj. <laughs> Raj? Yeah. Come on. Why Amy, bro? She sucks. Who sucks? Amy. What's his name? Sheldon's girlfriend. Uh, Maya Malcolm or whatever her name is? Well, oh, I mean, yeah. the fact that, you know. Blossom, he's saying. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing about her. We know she's a lot cuter than she plays on that show. Yeah. Proves she's a great actress. Right. Two, uh, she's the only thing to connect Sheldon. And three, Raj can't speak to women until he's drunk, and yet he's not drunk when he's speaking. He just seems normal. <laughs> Put that <laughs> over silly. with fucking Phoebe craziness. Yeah. So Raj is like an alcoholic on the show? No. Oh, he's just What about to talk Penny? To the best. Love her? Everyone loves her. She's the number one person on the show. <laughs> Is she the neighbor, the hot neighbor? Well, not, well, anymore. not anymore. She moved I mean, in and got married oh, and everything. She's oh, married, they got married to Big Bang. I didn't know. Big Bang is already off and you don't know anything about <laughs> I, it. I never watched an episode. I saw those YouTube videos where it took out the laugh track. That's the most I've ever seen in the show. <laughs> no show would work well without yeah. a laugh track. I mean, that's that's not really fair. It's the whole nature of a, right. a sitcom. They're going to They're be They're literally doing their pauses for the laugh track. Uh, let's go to Luther in Oakland. Uh, who is your weakest link? Hey, guys. I got to say, it's bothered me all my life. Aunt B. I don't understand why she doesn't have a southern accent. And she's just such a stick in the mud. Well, there is some truth to that. She didn't have a southern accent in the mm -hmm. middle of that fucking hillbilly town. <laughs> but I don't think she fit in. All right, here's one for you, though, Luther. Remember when uh, Barney left and they replaced him with that annoying her? Huh? You know what I mean, Andy? Howard's. Uh, oh yeah, the guy uh, Jack. What's his name yeah, from uh, so, Howard Schreiber guy? Yeah, yeah. So terrible. But when you almost brought up Howard Sprague, I mean, there's a guy. Why would they've even hung out with him? <laughs> I mean, this obviously gay guy back in the 1960s down south, pro probably the fucking clan would have got him. Right. And he didn't do anything fun. <laughs> All right, peace. 844 Rock God. We're talking the weakest link. Andrew in Toronto. Oh, by the way, I just noticed I'm the only one, one who's ever seen Andy Griffith's yeah, show. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I was just like, I feel like, I, I know it's not Barney. Uh, I'll also say this. Gooper is fucking really a fucking ridiculous character. <laughs> Gomer's brother. Um, Andrew in Toronto. Hey, guys. One of my favorite shows, Weakest Link from Roseanne. Gotta be DJ. <laughs> He's I pretty like, bad. I like. Yeah. I, I didn't like the the blonde sister. I can't remember you, her name. You didn't like. You liked DJ because he looked like you when you were younger. <laughs> Wait, you didn't like Becky? Is Becky the blonde? Hi, Becky. Becky was great. No. I mean, DJ was a worse actor. Well, let's wait. Be honest. Becky was which one? The blonde one? Yes. Well, she definitely wasn't as good as the other one. The no. lesbian. One. Oh no. Sarah no. Gilbert. Yeah, yeah. Darlene was. Uh, Hot fire. Her delivery was... I hated Roseanne's friend who came off almost like a little mentally ill. The oh, blonde yeah. one. Uh, oh, Crystal. Yeah. Hi, Roseanne. Yeah. Oh, yeah, fuck. yeah. Fucking ridiculous. Yeah. That was a little much. Right. But Deej didn't have the acting chops. You know what I mean? No. Again, this is a situation. You get a cute kid and you can push them through for a couple seasons. Yeah, he got by on his porkiness more than anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... Matt Westfield. Hey, Matt. So, hey, guys. Um, Bart Simpson, he, he got the show all the heat in the early 90s, but during the heyday of that show, he was never funny. Hmm. I think the the problem with that show, The Weakest Link, is Matt groaning. <laughs> <laughs> I think the show got bad when they became Homer-centric. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's when they realized... Oh, kids aren't watching this show, just older people who are trying to act like kids. Right. And they really, uh, they suck the butt on it. I don't think uh, it, it is Bart, though. I think that for that exact reason, they started to put less emphasis on Bart. I think Bart got less jokes. You know what I mean? He also got pussier. Oh, very pussy. But really, what does Lisa bring to the table? You know She's what I mean? just yeah. whiny. And Maggie didn't do shit. It's Maggie's the weakest link. They didn't need a baby. Wake up, Maggie. Uh, I'm not crazy about Marge either. Ah, 
Mm. Oh, I love Marge. The show should, should, should have been Stand built. up for yourself, bitch. <laughs> she should have left him. It should have been the Millhouses. <laughs> why did I have the bull, Bart? Then why did I have the bull? The Millhouses. <laughs> 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 Uh, Bernie in New Paltz. Yeah, Gilligan's Island, uh, the professor. What was he really there for? He never did a damn thing other than, like, you know, try to hook coconuts up a string and try to get satellites from... I mean, he did nothing for them. Nothing. Can I tell you something? Fat Skipper was always on my nerves because <laughs> it was... It was his fault they were there. <laughs> he didn't take enough of the blame. No. And what part of the country? They never say that the house came from. It's all like this. <laughs> Where do you come from? Fucking New England? Because it's new? I mean, it seemed like they would have caught it. And you're that rich. Yeah. You're just going out on a fucking little boat with these other ham and eggers? Yeah, that made no sense. They should charter their own private fucking boats. <laughs> Now, where did they leave from? Were they in Hawaii when they left, or yeah. were they in L.A.? I thought they were in Hawaii when they were They never there. say. Wait, who is and the rest? Like, before they listed that the whole That was Professor cast? Marianne. Okay, because I was going to say, Marianne, do you really need a Marianne if you have a ginger? You know what I mean? Can I tell you something? As many people like uh, Marianne as like ginger, I didn't even think it was close. But the girl next door and the sex bomb, this is literally why they did this. Right. It was a very smart move. Um, it you was, were Team Marianne or Team Ginger? No, I'm Team Ginger. I'm about yeah. show business. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not looking for an innocent girl next door. Yeah. You know? I love Ginger. I went va 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 boom. <laughs> That's my thing. <laughs> uh, boom. Uh, boom. How come they'd ever do that? Like play a drum when some fucking stack girl walks out. <laughs> All right. That's when television was television. Mark in New Jersey has a pick for Gilligan's Island. Yeah. It is absolutely Mrs. Howell, the worst there. <laughs> I'll the say worst. this. The show would have been more interesting if Mrs. Howell would have drowned and then Mr. <laughs> Howell would have been a widow oh, and yeah. fucking around with those girls and That's offering them money yeah. and shit. I, th I think Mr. Howell could have cross-dressed in her clothing to make interesting. it interesting. Yeah. That's an interesting I idea. Mean, this is already a better show. Uh, Sean in Boston. Hey, uh, Aunt Viv from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Which one, though? Because there's two. Both. I mean, they replaced them, and the show is still just as good. I mean, all the emotional the, moments the are with the uncle. And Ed did something like blew her fucking stack about something or whatever. Yeah, she was, yeah. yeah she got shit canned, I think, because um, she fought with Will, but I don't know over what. But they had a fucking beef. Why would you fight with the star of the show? I don't know. Yeah. I'd be um, like Chris fighting with Earl. And by the way, the answer is Ashley. She's a sister like with like no personality. I think she just is like gets them in trouble and stuff. I'm going to be honest here. You could put Will Smith in any show at that time, and it yeah. would have been a hit show. Yeah. He didn't need anybody. No, no. no. He didn't. He was Not even star. Carlton. You could have taken him, him, put him on Saved by the Bell, and it would have been the number one show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michael in Florida. All right, so I'm in a major quandary. So, Potsy or Ralph Mount? Uh, for me, I get rid of Potsy. Yeah, Potsy is almost forgettable. He was un yeah. unbearably bad. Oh, both, both of them. Neither one of them did it. Yeah, I think it's Potsy. What, you got a live read? Oh, no, no live read. Just yeah. a plug for our guests coming up. Uh, did the other thing start? Um, that I'm not, I haven't gotten word back yet. Uh, where's uh, Vito? Uh, talking with our guests. So you can't hear back from him. I was waiting for. Uh, I was. I didn't ask him for word on that. I asked someone else for word on that. The other thing. Why wouldn't you ask him if it's going on right now? Yeah, right? just ask him yeah. if it's on. I'll ask. Uh, and uh, let's do one more, and then we'll uh, jump out. Ryan in Orlando. Hey, afternoon, Bennington. Hey, how's it going? Good. Uh, so I, I thought of another one while I was on hold, but uh, got to be Paul from the Wonder Years. And uh, what about Boner from uh, Growing Pains? Yeah, Boner was pretty awful. <laughs> uh, Wonder Years, I mean, how many people? I, I take the dad out. He sucks. You know yeah, I mean? you're right. The mom I thought was great. I love her. the dad her. was terrible. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen Wonder Years any time except for in the first run. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I I've probably never, saw yeah. every episode when I did, it was yeah. on. But then never rewatched it. That was like one of those shows where it felt like 
tradition, like don't miss it. Mm-hmm. I remember we were always watching it. Yeah. And yet, you know, I have memories of it, like certain episodes have kind of stuck out in my mind, but you're right. I've never returned. Well, this is the thing. We were never a big family show, family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But because you kids could watch a thing about kids, but it would all be about the same time that I was growing up. Right. It was easy for me to put up with it. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> then when you had other things you liked, that was like this. Um, all right, I'm going to go up to my room. <laughs> um, all right, go ahead and plug. Uh, coming up next, Matt Bearden will be in studio. Nice. In Moon Tower at the Stand Comedy Club is happening tonight, January 13th, 7.30 p.m. The StandNYC.com is on the show. Ron Bennington, Jessica Curson, Dan Soder, Big J Ogerson, and many more. Uh, we'll be right back. This is Bennington. Club is happening tonight, January 13th at 7.30 p.m. Featuring Matt Bearden, Ron Bennington, Jessica Curson, Dan Soder, Big J Okerson, and many more. Go to the standnyc.com for tickets. Yeah, do that. Do yeah. that. Oh, it's it's really great. good to see both of you. Well, I've never seen you in your in your habitat. Laxed world. To see how more laid back it is than your world. Yeah, in it your is. world. Uh, well, that's why. I, yeah, yeah, it's way. Yeah, you know what I mean. But we, because we always, you don't have anybody. I don't see anybody from management staring through that door right now. We don't even know them. They come <sighs> in once a month. Command. They way come in once a month, and here's what they go because they have so many shows here. They go, "How are you guys doing?" I go, We're "Fucking crushing it." Yeah. yeah it, it, they go, "You are." I go, "Yeah." <laughs> Everything is just crushing. They're going, "That's great, that? man," and that's it. Yeah. And we're done. Yeah, I don't think I started off with uh, much energy. Also, we were talking about kids, and then I took a moment to actually think about all the things I need to do when I get home right? for my kids, and then I think that made me sad for a moment. It requires a lot of effort. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. makes you sad to have to do things, or you're sad because you miss them when you're on the road? I actually have missed them a lot, yeah. and I've only been I've been gone 24 hours. I know. I think, too, you know, you come to the, to New York, it's nice, and there's the, my son could care less. He doesn't like to leave the house. Right. He doesn't want to go anywhere that there are not Legos, but my daughter is really into theater and stuff like that, so yeah. I see things that you, this is yeah. not rock and roll conversation No, it is. It's very rock and roll. With. By the way, there's going to be a Lego TV show. You is know it that? really? It's going to be like a contest show where they're making Legos. Here's the problem I have with my child right yeah. now. Do you know how much Legos cost? They're, no it's, they're insane. They're insane. Really? It's, they're like $100 for uh, these big box kits. I had no idea. My son is six years old, and he can build one of those in f- 45 minutes, right. maybe. Right. So do you understand how much it's costing me to try to keep my son off of the iPad to develop him into a, a natural human being? <laughs> right. It's so much cheaper just to give him right. an iPad and say, okay, go at it, here's go at it. Here's, here's my Pornhub account number <laughs> and right. enjoy the rest Why of your not? life. Here's the other thing, here's a pack of cigarettes. You want to spend 45 minutes doing something. Sure. So, something Smoke productive. up a little, yeah. Something productive. And I'll tell Get you what, character the about girls yourself. will think that you're cool. I don't yeah. care what anybody says. They're going, who is that bad boy with those smokes? Well, it's interesting you said this because I was just thinking about the amount of things you buy for a baby that are so ridiculously expensive and they've grown out of them within right. six months, sometimes three months. Like a bassinet, very expensive, very crucial. You can't use it like three Is the bassinet later. the bed next to the bed? Bed next to the bed. bed does does bed. your baby sleep in that thing? She did when she was teeny. And now she's, does she, where does she sleep? Now she has a crib. Oh, and so now she she's didn't, start- you didn't pull the move where you started her in there and then immediately moved her into your bed? Well, she, does, like, it's a half and half situation. Okay. I always and I'm not going to shame you because I know that, like, yeah. I guess there's some ladies on the internet that will shame you because you will- loved your child. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, there are people who are like, never share a bed with your child. Right. You'll kill them. And then also they'll turn out crazy. My no, wife I'm a co-sleeper. For panicked sure. about the stuff that we had to build immediately. Yeah. And all of it sat unused uh, because it's, immediately she was like, well, right. I don't want my child sleeping over there. I was like, why the fuck did I have to build that thing right. immediately? Well, exactly. you know, if you remember when you were little, Gail, we didn't want you coming into the bedroom because we didn't want uh, to freak out your mom and I's girlfriend. So we're like, you got to <laughs> right. stay down the hall a little bit. You know, shit gets weird here. <laughs> yeah. It's mommy, daddy, and... Carla time. Yeah. It was weird that you got Carla to fit in the bassinet. Yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah. I thought that was a hell of a That's all move. part of the fun. That's yeah. all part of the it's, fun. I'm it's glad fantasy. You could reuse yeah. it. For yeah. Something. yeah. And Gail <laughs> slept in the sex swing. It was really, <laughs> yeah. it worked out nice for everybody. Everybody has to do their own thing. That's what I say. But even, even the crib, she's now like got a foot up. 
and like she's gonna she's, be yeah, out of she's, it. Yeah, she's she's a climber. So then that's like uh, you know mm-hmm. my mom was like you got to get a toddler bed soon. I'm like I had this for like six months. Yeah, this right. is crazy. Do you know that we used to not have any of that stuff? And yeah. kids, some kids didn't survive, I guess. Yes. But they got <laughs> weeded. They got weeded from the herd. Four right. kids on my uh, block died when I was a kid. All had to do with something to do with cars, getting hit by cars. Right. Because we ran around the neighbor. People go now, oh, everybody, we used to just go out and run. We did too. And four kids out of like 14 houses died. God, that's horrifying. Yeah. One of the kids, we went to his funeral. He was wearing his Little League outfit. Blew through a red light. Got hit. More. This makes yeah, me feel okay, good. You know? Yeah, that was. Okay. That was, <laughs> was that was that the yeah, belly? Yeah, that was his belly. Was that? that yeah. was my belly. My yeah. belly just made a really insane sound that I've never even heard it make before. <laughs> <laughs> you were you somebody? It's weird that somebody mentions dead babies and you get hungry right <laughs> yeah. away. That's a weird. That response. is an odd thing. That's his thing. Yeah. <laughs> Vina, remember you're going to be plug guy from that position. Yeah. Not now because that now I've warned you, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. you want to plug as we're moving along as we go. Yeah. But, you know, we were um, up on the iBang. There's a story about, you know, the Texas instruments? Yeah. Like the calculators and how those are like $100 yeah. and a requirement for a certain age kid. And then, like, you barely use those I things. didn't know anybody still used calculators. I thought you just use your phone now. I think they still require kids to buy this this calculator. Yeah, it's a graphing calculator. It costs 105 bucks. And, like, if you remember this class, you use it, like, two or three times throughout the year for this $100 function. Yeah. And the rest, you just play games on it. Yeah. No. I'm, I'm feeling guilty. I don't my, even remember a graphing class. My wife is a math teacher, uh-huh. a statistics teacher. So she's the person responsible for everyone buying that hundred. Yeah. It's actually one nineteen now. I know that because my wife <laughs> yeah. hands them out to kids that can't afford them, and then Aww, we buy them more of nice. them. It's not nice. Yeah. I have to pay for them, Ron. Well, what, what you take do? my side for once. Well, take your Lego money and uh, you know do something good with it. Oh, uh, do you know? Remember, remember when you were single and everything was fun? Money yeah, was, yeah. Except I never had any money then because I didn't care about money. I spent right. it on really dumb stuff. Dumb right. stuff. Like that, that's a, a um, when you're deciding if you're gonna have another kid. It's like it's expensive enough to have one kid, but then you just say like, "Do I want this this kid to have a sibling, or do I want some money for their college?" You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, are we gonna just be really poor and have two kids, or just kind of poor with one kid? You know, when pe- pe- young people always say how much money to raise a kid, and it literally is all of it. No matter who yeah. you are, like Bill Gates is going. I don't fucking believe. <laughs> oh, he's ex- you know? he's he's pissed. Yeah, yeah. I he's don't believe pissed. this. He's having to buy the one million dollar Lego set. He's right. Still, yes. <laughs> they children have a six six sense. They can figure out what your 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 tolerance is. Right. And they go yes. straight for that. There and is even, no. And even you don't even realize you're putting those standards on yourself. But once you move up to a certain level, everyone around you, well, we're going Everybody's to this kind of school, like, yeah. and they, ha- you know, you got to get your kid a car because everybody has a car. Well, in a different social circle, you wouldn't at all. Yeah. But yet you're always going to bring yourself up to that standard. The rich people, their kids can only do the very best Coke. You know what I mean? Like, they're not just happy (laughs) with some street drugs. They have to have something really fucking clean and nice. It's sad. Yeah, but then they they ruin the street price for the rest of us. That's the problem. That's why we should be angry with the rich. Right. That's the problem right there, is that they've ruined uh, our ability (laughs) to get a cheap high. (laughs) Now, Vito, did you feel like you grew up with money or you grew up poor? Um, I grew up, I don't think I grew up with money, but my mom went out of her way to like make sure I had stuff. Like she, it, she, it wasn't easy for her to get it for me, but she didn't want me to feel like I was missing out on anything because I only had one parent. Single mom? Yeah, yeah single yeah. mom. Guilt? A little bit guilt. of guilt. A lot there of too. guilt. Lot of it guilt. was mostly guilt. Yeah. Single mom, but 13 dads. So it was a very, very <laughs> nice one. <laughs> did you ever feel weird like on like a father and son thing when you didn't have a. My mom would just show up to them. Yeah. And uh, with be, a mustache. <laughs> She's Italian, so yeah. she didn't have to do anything extra. <laughs> but yeah, she would just show up to that kind of stuff and, and feel like she was allowed, like that it was bullshit. By the way, I think that you're lucky that it was your dad died and not your mom. I always think the sad thing is little boy without a mom, little girl without a dad. That's when you get really fucked up. Yeah. You know? And I only would date girls whose dad died. Really? That was my. Yeah. That's your thing. That's your kink. Love that broken thing. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean. I love to bring in the broken. You know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it is true. If you're gonna, if you're gonna lose a parent, 
the losing the mom it's really brutal for, yeah. for little kids right like i knew i i knew like a couple families with like their dad passed away when they were young but i i knew one family whose mom passed away while they were all young a do- a girl and two boys and oh god it just made me so sad i couldn't even look at them they made me so sad i mean you remember what kind of parent i, I would have to give you and your brother away yeah, if your mom we died. would have been like raised by grandparents kind of kids. Yeah. <laughs> you, you couldn't have soloed that? No. Yeah, no. I hear you. I couldn't even be a decent partner. I was more like the oldest brother <laughs> in the family. <laughs> or a cool uncle that yeah, we got cool to uncle. hang out with. Yeah. <laughs> a cool uncle goes, stay up all night. What do we care? I'd always be like, where, where are you guys going? Uh, we got movies. Yeah. <laughs> this, di- this is 100% true. Yeah. I didn't know that a lot of responsibility came along with it. I thought, you know, let's just have as much time, fun as we can while we have this time together. Right. At least I was around a lot. It was around 23 hours a day. <laughs> True. You know, I had to check out every once in a while. But, you know, <laughs> other than that. Uh, but Vito, did you? At the holidays where it's like a, um, uh, a tape measure with a built-in compass and a flashlight. Like, yeah. It's one of those gifts where you're like, that is a, that's someone who's like, I don't know what to get my dad. And then they right. come already pre-wrapped. And I'm like, oh, some dad has to open that. Right. And pretend to be happy. Yeah. But nobody nobody wants that. And none of that is specific to the person. It's no. It's just like, no. you're a male, right? You, you like, you like these things. things. <laughs> Plus, also, I have my own money. I really don't need a kid coming around trying to pick out a present well, for me. To be honest with you, that's the trouble with buying a gift for any man, not just a dad. I, fe- I find this to be problematic for shopping for my husband, for my brother. It's just like men buy things that they want. It's exactly when they true. Want them. Yes. Right. So when yeah. they want a thing, they get it. Well, not I'll everything. stop on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> so Be it. it's just like, I don't know what you don't want. Matt Bearden's in studio, and uh, Moon Tower at the Stand Comedy Club is happening tonight, January 13th at 7.30 p.m., featuring Ron Bennington, Jessica Kirsten, Dan Soder, Big J Okerson, and many more. Go to the standnyc.com for tickets, and the Dudley and Bob with Matt show airs weekdays at 6 a.m. So on fun. 93.7 KLBJ in Austin, Texas. Thank uh, you for By the plug. way, do, you, do your kids play uh, board games, or it's all video games? They've gotten into some board games Good. right now. There, We've got one right now where you... The, the th- my 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 youngest son not my he's my only son I don't know why I call him youngest son. <laughs> <laughs> he loves to play games but he he's a math whiz at like five I guess it comes right. from his mother and uh, so it's fun because you can play dice games and stuff with him he can right. add in his head uh, really high numbers that's really cool and then uh, we have some game where you some you you say a word and everybody else writes down a word and you try to match I'm I'm doing a terrible job of it's selling like, this uh, game to other people like but it's category it's, it's like, sort of like yeah. that. Kind of I like those Password. kinds of games. Yeah, I like open ended those cards that you could just say to the family. What's the worst thing that you ever bought? You know, and, right. and it's just kind of conversation starters. I like those. Yeah. Too. Have you ever played Butt Hurt? No, I don't think so. We play it on air uh-huh. on our show a lot. It is really brutal. You, we would go around and everybody would get a card. So you'd be like number one, right? Around, okay, and then Gail, you'd be number two. So I have in my hand one through five or whatever. Then you flip over a card and you're like, who's who's actually the worst at giving gifts? Or who's actually the worst at ever saying sorry? And then anonymously you throw the number in. Okay. And then we start flipping those over. And you find out how your friends really feel, but you don't know who threw what number in. I like and you that. think like, oh, it'll be kind of fun. People get their feelings right. really hurt over the game, yeah. so it's a it's a no lose for us on air because we don't like each other. Right? Sounds yeah, about. everybody gets but their feelings. But for family, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the stakes are high. With family. <laughs> now, Earl, are you worried that most people are going to say you because they say that anyway? Yeah. There's a concern, yes, yeah. but I'm always uh, I try to I try to be cool. A lack of a better word. Huh? No, uh, there is there's nothing cool about you, Earl. No. Other than the way that until you start time, you look cool. It looks like hey, yeah. you're a black guy all dressed in black. You know this is great. I love to style. go anywhere with Earl. You know yeah. what I mean? Because people are like, hey, no trouble, and I go, yeah, we'll be cool. <laughs> uh, then he starts to talk, and they go, nerd. But you can't really, um, you know, say that you're you try to be cool when you attacked the mic earlier when you're so angry. Right? Yeah, he does. He has got a temper too. Now, uh, you know, when we were out on the road, they somebody had games in the green room, and Florentine's kid, we played Connect 
four with him, and you would yes. think he had never saw the game. He's like 10, had never seen Connect Floor before. Ended up loving it. We yeah. played for hours. Hours. And I'm like, I wish some of these kids knew that these board games know, are that's, fun. That's the other thing is I think people are always like, these kids are always on their iPads, but you see like... It's easy for the parent to hand oh, sure. a child an iPad. You sure. know what I mean? It's harder to show them games. Chris, and what's going on? Them. Just tell us. What's wrong? Where are you going, Chris? Do you what's need me going? out of here? I wanted to bring um, some of our friends here to go come meet uh, Matthew McConaughey. Oh, Whoa! yeah. Run down the moon tower. People are here. I'll see the Colleen moon tower Lisa. people later. Yeah. Do you want Do you to know? run down? No, no, no. But no, look. So McConaughey, uh, a guy named Chris Hannum, I yeah. think I'm saying his name right. And Hugh Grant were literally in the lobby a second ago. Yeah. And they did that thing where they you can tell they kind of clear the lobby a little bit. Right. But it just ha I was like, oh, something must be getting ready to happen. Because suddenly your lobby was filled with 90 women right. all at once, <laughs> pretending that they had some business to do. Right. And suddenly the three girls are not good with your game. No. no. Sorry, Gail, but there's no. not. They all got giddy and the phones came out. My, my boots are wet now. Yes. Uh, they went. Uh, it, they went gaga. It was so weird to watch them shaky, and then they all looked at each other and started giggling. Girls have no chill. It's no funny. chill, You're right? Right. Because they're it's so uh, it's not as often that we are taken visually by a man. Uh, you know that's I mean? true. Like that's you know what? Man. Fuck you. Uh, how dare you? How dare you? It's just not. Typical. It is rare. I mean, more often than not, yeah. I see a woman that I'm like. Oh. I'm stunned. Yeah, that's right. probably true. That you is true. You know what I mean? True. Like, I can't believe yeah. it. She'll oh, you're take my breath away. But you know, the, the <laughs> no, thing is, uh, McConaughey is a dreamboat to a certain type of woman. Yes. But then the other guy, the English guy. Yes. Women have loved him for 30 years, it's too. Interesting. Two, like, two different camps. Right. And who, yet... are you, who's, who, who are you taking, Ron, out of the two? Oh. Who's more your style? You know what? I mean, I, I, I'm going to take... Uh, I'm going to take you, Grant, because I feel like he's a bottom. You know what I mean? Really? And I don't, yeah. I don't want to fight for who's the top. You okay. know what I mean? I don't want to snuggle with a man. You know right. what I mean? I'm going to you really, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna going, take him out. If you're, gonna, yeah. if you're going, you're going. Yeah. Let's yeah. do this. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you that Hugh, I shouldn't, Hugh didn't look like as much fun. I'm going to be, it, from just the, from no, just the 10 the seconds yeah. I got. Right. And, um, but he seemed much more proper. Much right. more, right. more proper. I mean, I'm sure that what we're talking about here is almost like a fuck Mary minus yes. the kill situation where I feel like maybe, Hugh, you could have a nice life for yourself, but you're going to have a wild night with McConaughey. I'll say this about McConaughey, though, but if you're with him, I think he's going to embarrass you at certain times. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, even being his buddy would be a little uncomfortable right. for me because I know he was like, you know, all right, all right. And we're like, dude, yeah, that I mean, thing's if you think done. The New Year's tweet. Yeah. I mean, is that. It's one thing if you hooked up with that guy. It's quite another if yeah. that's your husband. And I don't know who the third guy was. It's it's Charlie Hunnam. He's Hunnam. Uh, from Sons okay. of Anarchy. He's like another guy that girls. Are really he was him. very. He was I a very handsome dude. I don't know. I I don't know him from what he. Do. I don't. I'm not a big. Uh, I don't know a lot of. Media? Fifty Shades of Grey, too, right? Oh, oh no, that? that's a different guy. That's Jamie. He's Frank. a handsome dude, don't you think? He's a very think? handsome guy. I saw him in there. I, mean, I was he's interested. Totally honest. He's, no, look bronze, at, he's bronze medal for me. Somebody face photoshopped his face on my body. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Yeah, this is a good looking fella. Does that Just work for you? Taking a look, taking a gander. So anyway, Which yeah, one? all three Who of them. Pick? are... Um, I mean, like, I, I'm going to have to just put him in third place only because of the name now, why recognition. You... I'm just saying if we're going to sit there and... Do you do you ever read any of those pickup artist books? We've had some pickup artists yeah. on the air, and they would tell you... Go for the third. Go for the third because it'll right. it would it, it's you're going to get in the head of the other two guys, and then they're going to have to... Right. Hey, all right, a minute. Let me step in yeah, here, Gary. Sure. Hey. <laughs> It's pretty good and, uh, no, it wasn't. Um, <laughs> that's not what I'm it. here. I got to pay extra for that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I feel like I took this approach once with a band where, did you? Like, there was a band, and me and my girlfriends were all hanging around, and I was like, "There's two knock them out of the park kind of looking guys." But now, you figured one you'd, very, you'd go for the drummer anyway. There was one very <laughs> acceptable one, and I was like. I'm set my sights here, and I feel like, ladies, I'm going to have success. Did you? I did have success. What did he so, play? Um, he played keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 great fingers, though, at least. Uh, ladies, how was it? How did it work out? It was super awesome. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, That's uh, Lisa and Colleen from Moon Tower, yeah. and they're with me By uh, the way, this weekend. Yeah. And they run the best festival that we have yes. in comedy. It's the most, most fun. fun. Yeah. I've missed the last two years. Of yes. Baby. Stupid baby. <laughs> Just bring your baby now, and leave the baby with some comics and they'll take care of yeah, it. Yeah, they're good parents. Now, yeah. did you meet all of them or just McConaughey? Just McConaughey, but that was really cool. Did you? So did you get to meet him, shake did his you hand? Get, did, yes, oh, and they must have, because look picture. at the smile yes, on Lisa's face. Chris, did, did you get a picture look of them? Look at that. I did not get it, but the, there are pictures being texted to me. Yeah. Oh, so yes, yeah. yeah, so you got yes. a picture is got all you got to say. Yeah. Not you personally. Now, did you tell them about the moon tower and it's based on... exactly, the Paramount and the moon tower immediately. And what do you say? He's like, yeah, I love that place. And he was talking about Richard Linkletter and yeah. But does he get that you named that after the line that he did? I think he started to put it together at the end. He had a lot going on. And right. He's, he's very busy teaching at UT. Yeah, but you'd think <laughs> he would love to come over sometime. Yeah. Yeah. He looked great, right? I saw Really it. good. Remarkable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lisa's smiling so <laughs> yeah, hard right. so that the glint from her teeth, you can barely see her wedding ring right now, huh? <laughs> now, uh, that's really funny. But, see, no, here's why I love this. You guys are never going to forget this day. You're like, oh, yeah. we swung by, and there's McConaughey who, you know, lives three miles from you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But here's the beauty of it. I think that if he came to that festival and saw how cool it was, he'd want to come every year and, and host it or something. You know? I right. think he would. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I believe we've reached out to him before. I'm not positive about this, but he hasn't been in Austin during that period. Right. But we're going to get lucky one of these times. Well, you will. And like I said, that that festival was so much fun. It's done, I hate to say, because I know you work for some of the other festivals, so much better than what everybody else does. You know? Yeah. Not, it's a it's yeah. very smooth weekend. Yeah. And it is very uh well, I don't know. Should I shut my mouth on that? I feel like it's less industry forward and more like, hey, how can we 100%. throw a party for comics? It's so fun. Because I get to see a bunch of friends that I don't see all year. Yeah. And then instead of me seeing them for five minutes and then being like, Well, I'll see you next year, I get to there's a lot of time get for to me to hang, hang out. out you people. get to eat, it's there's great food. Really it's fun. Really, really chill. I know Barry Crimmins said it was his most fun he's ever had in his life. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. It's Barry so had funny. a little meltdown there because he didn't understand doing the size sets. Yeah. You know? And then oh, true, Barry. Eight minutes. Yeah. 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 And, he, and, and Barry's like, where? what do I do with the other two yeah. hours? Right. Yeah. I always say, give me the least amount of time that you can. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to do 30 seconds. But in, in true uh, Barry fashion, I feel like to see him in his like grumbly stage, is, right. it's very important to see him that way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because he's Barry. normally out trying to do the great moral thing. Yeah. Uh, Chris, let me ask you, who's the person that we need to thank for putting this together? That would be Come. Margo. Margo is the one. Margo. Didn't she also up. do something nice for us before, too? J-Lo. J-Lo. Oh, oh yeah. yes. I got to sleep with J-Lo. I didn't even tell <laughs> wow. you about wow. it. Wow. How was that? Yeah. It wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. You know what? Sometimes you build yeah. it up in your mind. I yeah. hope that Hugh Grant is better. Yes. You know, I really do. I hope you get... We were saying that. Who would you pick? And uh, you always pick between guys, Vito. Yeah. yeah. Who, um, who would be your guy? For me, it would be Matthew McConaughey. Just like... You doesn't like he seem, him. Doesn't he seem like a better hang? He seems like a better hang. He seems like a really cool dude who just wants to hang out, maybe work out a little. I've seen him doing that thing where he's on a longboard paddle boarding in the street. That seems like a fun couple's well, that's like, more couple's time than I want to spend. Yeah. See, this you know, is, again, I'm going to go actually. back to the hookup situation. Yeah. That's fun for a weekend, but if that's your husband, that's exhausting. All right, here's what John Stewart said. When he ended his show, they said, who's the worst guest ever? And he said, you, Grant, was a total <laughs> ass. Really? He said he really? came in, treated the staff like shit. Which oh, my God. Everybody, like, the worst way to get to me is, like, if you come in and yell at one of my producers. Yeah. Because then I know, and then you come in and act nice. To you. With the, yeah. It's yeah. bullshit. Yeah. And that really always makes you mad because everybody's right. been that other person before. But then you, Grant, said, yeah, it's true. I am the worst. Did he? Oh, he yeah, did? He, just, he, he copped to it? That's the English way. He goes, yes. I that's mean, actually pretty. Very, yeah. yeah, and that made that me like, like him. More. Who's, yeah. the, who's the uh, uh, the English singer that sang something about, like, uh, you, you're beautiful? Do you know what I'm talking about? James Blunt. I, did, I, what is it called? Subtweeting? I, I tweeted some stuff about how I 
was trying to write something mean about him, and then I got a song stuck in my head all all day long, <laughs> and I was like, oh, he, he good play, you won this round, right? Yeah. But I didn't even tag him into it. Right. But I guess he has some kind of alert. And then he started writing me really funny stuff, and I was like, "Oh, you've won me over. You're my, right. you're my fate. I thought you were gonna be a jackal, and you're super funny." And you, he was like, uh, "Whatever the term I'm looking for, self-deprecating." Uh, yes. I was like, "Oh, you're, you're, you're. A, I love him. Yeah. I don't still, that, I don't still don't like his music, but I like him." But that is true. Like, if you have somebody on your show and they're cool, you'll root for them the rest of their career. You know right. what I mean? You right. love that person, right? You know, right? How many comics you know that are on the road because they're a good hang more than they're good on stage? There's I think plenty a lot. of people, yeah. Yeah, I, I also know there are some people on the road that are great on. Oh man, there are some people who are great on stage and just terrible on air. Oh Seinfeld, but what I'm saying is this though. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm going to tell you the truth. When I started radio, there used to be a lot. Most comics were bad on radio. radio. It's a yeah. different it's a different yeah. muscle. But now it's different because of podcasts. They've had enough sure. time to go out and do that that people can come in and do stuff. In and, fact, yeah. I, it's almost shocking when you meet a comedian who's not easily like flow with conversation and they feel uncomfortable. It's very rare. That you're like, "Oh, that's really strange." Do you think part of it too is that we all came from a background where it was I mean, when you're on stage, the last thing you want is attention somewhere else. That means you're not doing well. Right. And then if you're on especially like a show where you're all talking around, I think it's used to make people uncomfortable. Like, am I doing poorly that, right. that everything's not about me right now? Yes. I don't know, it's a guess. You mean that some comics can come in and just go that I don't know how to speak outside of myself. Sure. You know? Yeah, that's sure. that's a common thing. Um, I'll just say it, Joe DeRosa. There's certain people <laughs> that don't like Chris. Uh, Vito, are we plugging it all? Because this is a great day. Matthew McConaughey. Uh, everything. And Colleen and Lisa and Chris came through like he was supposed to, which is... Great job, Chris. Yeah. Matt Bearden's in studio and Moon Tower at the Stand Comedy Club is happening tonight, January 13th at 7.30, featuring Ron Bennington, Jessica Kirsten, Dan Soder, Big J Okerson. Go to thestandnyc.com for tickets. And the Dudley and Bob with Matt show airs weekdays at 6 a.m. on 93.7 KLBJ in Austin, Texas. Legendary, guys. Now, Chris, did you go down and tell the booking department that I'm doing the... Love Actually Festival, and I'd love to have you <laughs> stop by. I can, I can get that note to them right now. Right. Okay. <laughs> It'd be a great festival. Chris, you really feel like you came through today? I feel like I made some people happy, and that's what counts. Right. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> that adorable. And, that was, uh, uh, and you thought of that this morning when you saw that they, when you came in and saw that... Uh, no, 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 Ron, that was all your master plan. I was just it a wasn't tool a master you plan. used. I walk into the place... I see the name Matthew McConaughey. I go, wouldn't that be great to get them together? And he's like, why would they want to get together? <laughs> I go, Moon Tower, Moon Tower. There's a common thread in the in the Venn diagram. It's that little centerpiece, Moon now, Tower. Now, did you were you each with Matthew, or did he do you both together? Well, I think we kind of stuck together a, yeah. a, a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's. Uh, yeah, that's how I am with women too. I like that too. Yeah, I like to have too. Yeah. That way, if somebody gets something, gets a phone call or whatever, you're keeping everything sure. going. Right, yeah. right, yeah. right. You, can you concentrate that much? No. No. Okay. Let's be honest. <laughs> Let's be honest with ourselves. Um, normally, I also have to have something. Like, who sent us uh, some stuff? For a minute today, which which one of the guys? Oh, uh, Bob Bob Fonseca. No, okay. he, did he? Um... So it's very adorable. Anytime one of you guys does the show, mm -hmm. one of the other will give us some show prep. Yeah. So do you have it on you? We're not nice people to one another. Yeah. I, there's no way that whatever he sent you shows me in a positive light. I mean, okay. That's my Let's feeling. Because yeah. he did it with Veto. And by the way, I consider Bob to be one of the nicest people I I've ever Bob. met. He really yeah. is a yeah. very kind. Human being, I and think. also uh, I found this out from a lot of women when you there, attractive. Mm -hmm. A lot Apparently. of women said, "What an attractive man!" I go, "You're fucking kidding me!" <laughs> I, I go, "No." The Matt is a prince. He used to work on oil rigs in the Gulf. He was a star. Well, on first of all, let's just stop there. Yeah. That's really fucking cool. Is it? Yes. I used to do that. Uh, Did Armin you hear my voice go down yeah. when I said <laughs> yeah, I used to? Uh, I used yeah. to do some manly stuff. How long? I did a lot. I did every summer. When I was in college, and uh, and Christmas breaks, I would do. Uh, I'd go to the Gulf, and then I uh, I spent one summer. I worked off of the coast of Nigeria. 
Wow. Uh, yeah. That's crazy. It, you know, it, it was sort of, I mean, I was kind of, uh, I did like just like. Uh, good money though, right? It was, mm, no. No, no, really. I mean, it was good money for what I, you know, it was, I, I was an 18 year old kid. Yeah, sure. But I wouldn't want to raise a family on that or whatever. But wow. I, it, it, but it, what, it, what it did do is it gave me enough dough to, I could throw really good parties in college. Oh, so right, everybody's going to buy a six pack, right? A six pack at back then was probably three fifty four bucks. Yeah. And I'd say, everybody throw in your money and we'd end up with $24. I could throw in the other 45 on top of that. Now we have a keg. And yeah, now like, we hey, had a reason, and now we had a reason to right. say, Ladies, do you want to come by, drink our beer, ignore us, and then leave? Oh, and they would sweet. say, okay, yes, we do. You know, Party in the making, you know as who, we speak. You know who else did that? Richard Linklater. <laughs> yeah. He actually did that for a while, too. It's about, I guess it's a Texas he wor- thing. Oh, he worked on oil rigs yeah. as well? I didn't know that yeah. about him. Yeah. And it's the same thing before, I think, college, to get college money or something together. Yeah, it wasn't, uh, but I, didn't want to, I mean, it taught me that I didn't want to do it for the rest of my life. But yeah. I still like it. I'm good with my hands, ladies. <laughs> All right, give us another one. He was a star on MTV's sitcom Austin Stories. That is true. Ooh, that is true. Sweet. Uh, that was twenty years ago. I think it's my last credit. It ends twenty years. Twenty ago. years ago. Yeah. yeah. But it was fun. I had sold. I sold shoes, mm-hmm. and I got the audition, and I and I booked it, and I left my shoe selling job, and went to work for Viacom, and took a pay cut. Wow. It, I literally started making less money a week <laughs> yeah. to work for Viacom than when I sold shoes. I once sold a pair of Teva sandals to Laura Bush, who became the first lady of the United States. At the time, she was the first lady of Texas. Tevas, huh? Uh, yeah. yeah, and I'm going to tell you something, and I shouldn't say this because she is a, uh, a Texas woman, but um, kind of bunyany. I'm gonna be wow. honest with you right now. Yeah. I'm sorry. I shouldn't. That's me. That's me. Would help, that's though, me. You know? I think it was she was looking for a comfort <laughs> shoe to just say, "Hey, look, it's my time. This is my time. I don't. I'm like, I can't be pumps and flats right. and mules all the time." You know that she had. Uh, there was a vic- vehicular. Is that it? Vehicular la- manslaughter with her. Not and, my shoes. No, no. I'm not the responsible. The sandal was stuck in the <laughs> gas pedal. Oh my God. They, she said they were too wide. That was the problem. <laughs> All right, give us another one. The you know? last one is he once auditioned. Are you cold in here? That you need that hat? No. You okay. I just like just wearing looking my hat. Cool. That's All my right. comfort hat. Good. Bad hair too. God, I really love the sim- this is a bizarro. I love the similarities between our our shows. Yeah. That uh, they who wear the two folks who do the most work are are punished the most. I the got, most. I got news for you. Neither one of these guys can say anything because they got eighteen things on both of them. Did you? I know every felony that they could be picked up on. <laughs> did, you, did you notice Many. that I even said two people? I yeah. completely excluded one of your staff members as well. Well, he I'm does pe- nothing. You understand <laughs> that it's New York. We have to have a black. They said. They if said you're going to wear that yeah. much black yeah. against that black curtain, it yeah. is not my fault for not knowing that he was right. even yeah. in the room at the time. We need some front lighting. You know what I mean? The back right. lighting makes it even worse. But this is New York. They said, what do you want? A black guy or a Jew? Like a black guy. Right oh, for away. sure. Yeah. Yeah, Give me a black guy. Yeah. I can trust him. Vito, <laughs> uh, you know, what's the next one? He once auditioned for Cameron Crowe for Almost Famous. Yeah. yeah that's his favorite true. movie. Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Is it? I absolutely. I mean, when I was a youngster and saw that movie, it was incendiary. <laughs> really? <laughs> Does really? it still yeah, hold it. up for you? Uh, yeah, because I no matter what to me it was like I can't unmarry the moment. That but I what saw was the it. thing that got you so? So the thing was that at that very time I was like William Miller's age, the character. Mm-hmm. You know, I was that age, and I was moving to New York City at the same time. Like at this was happening, the movie came out. So to me, it was that thing of just kind of the lights and, turning on, a whole new set of exciting. Yeah, people she went from me. the suburb to this and. She's like, we get here. She goes, I'm going to try out for this school where, you know, you go and you're an actor and you're a singer. And I go, look, honey, this isn't the suburbs. You're going to get fucking crushed. Right. Britney Spears went to this show. It's going on. So then I tell her, don't do it. Don't <laughs> risk your feelings. Go to regular school. <laughs> right. right. Um, and then she went and she got into the school and came back. And then I was like, fuck, you know. 
Yeah, it was very, and there, it was just like a lot of things were happening in my life, and he was very much like that fish out of water who was his. And for some reason, eyed. we just said to her, "Go ahead, roam New York with <laughs> yeah. your friends. Yeah. You're all yeah. thirteen or whatever. Go roam New York. You'll be fine." Well, here. that was interesting Safe. when when we, uh, you know, I grew up in the suburbs, and I felt like, oh my god, my parents won't let me do anything. They won't let me go to the mall with my friends, and well, and then we moved here, and then suddenly I could go anywhere, and I was like, really. The entire city, I could go anyway. So it was because like, it wasn't oh. mall culture. Right. We didn't want you to seriously grow up to be a mall person, <laughs> right? You know? right. But, you, but I want to go to the village. Yes, yes. Of you go can. to the village. Yeah. See, Ben. All right, let's try this to Matt. Though, what what part do you think that he would have been good for? Yeah. God, interesting. It's a very specific part, and I know who got it. I never. Okay. I'll, I I'll never guess. like him because of it. I think I know. Really? I think it went to another comic. Am I correct? Can you uh, say that? Yeah. Okay, I know who it is. <laughs> what is it? It's the the character that um, Jimmy Fallon played. Holy shit. Is How, Rhea, it is, absolutely. That I is. wasn't going that. I was that going... really is the part. I know. Yeah. It. Did you know that? No, I swear to God. It was just... I was sleeping in my bed, and mm -hmm. I, my phone rang, and I used to sleep late then, mm -hmm. and it was right after this MTV show, and someone was like, I'm calling from... I'm ca you know. You know how they do that thing that how yeah. you know I'm calling yeah. from for Cameron Crow or whatever, and I immediately was like, "Fuck, I know that name. Who is he? A You're bar so owner? Man. Did I, <laughs> I? I left a credit card. I didn't yeah. pay something. I made. I used to make a lot of mistakes when I was younger. And I was like, "Yeah, I'm right in the middle of something. Can I? Can I call you right back?" And they're like, "Sure." And then I hung up and I had to call him. Was like, "Who the? F Cameron? I know that guy. Somebody in town. Who did I pay? Who's Cameron Crow?" And people were like, "Um." Yeah, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. And I was like, oh, right, right. It was oh, thank God, I'm not in trouble. But then it was a weird call back because I think I was supposed to be more gracious when they first called. But yeah, I did a couple of, like, sent a couple of tapes. And then um, Jimmy Fallon got it. But in the end, who, who won? Huh? <laughs> in the end, who really came out victorious? You know what? Uh, I thought they would have uh, um, shut the gate. Shut oh, the fucking yeah. gates. Lock the gates on these fuckheads. Yeah. Mark Barron's part. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been good for you, too. Yeah, yeah I could be mean. But the, the guy that that was based on that uh, Fallon played right. was just in here not too long ago. Really? He's the tiniest thing you've ever seen in your life. What's his name, Earl, the Eagles manager? Irving Azoff. Yeah. I mean, he's the tiniest little thing, but he was just a deadly manager. Really? Wow. You know what I mean, yeah. just a killer. Yeah. Yeah. What's the, the line that that character keeps saying over and over when he's like, Respectfully, or? yeah, respectfully, yeah. respectfully. Yeah. respectfully. Now, um, I can. Uh, do you know how much? Do you know how to not get charged for the ice on the mask? <laughs> yeah. See, I still remember the lines because it's a perfect. lot of pain. Yeah. It was a hard movie to sit sure. through because it was good, but I was like, <laughs> "Fuck." Uh, I mean, I could, glory days, right? But you know, a lot of times it, it's like Cameron would go, "Oh, we got this guy, and he can go and get on," you know. The Tonight Show and plug it, even though he has a small part. Right. You know what right. I mean? Right. So you are going to take a Jimmy Fallon when you get the chance to do that kind of stuff. Sure. It's going to save you a little money, but I can tell you right now, your read was better. I know it. Yeah. <laughs> Gail, you seem you. more like him. Yeah. You. you know That's what? why Thank I got the vibe uh, right away. The vibe of a very tiny guy. Yes. <laughs> Well, you had never well, seen. I didn't know he was short. You never saw Irving, right? Yeah. He was up here, and he was with the guy who owns the Knicks, right? Uh, and that guy has, uh, and he also w owns Madison Square Garden, right? Good for them. And he also has a club uh, cover band that he takes out Does he really? on the road in his private fucking jet. And they've got all this fucking equipment. It's just insane. What are they called? The J JD and the Straight Shot. <laughs> JD and the Straight Shot. He's literally a billionaire. I know a couple yeah. of very wealthy guys who yeah. have these projects, and sometimes I want to roll my eyes, and then sometimes I'm like, hey, you still have to have something to do with your time. Right, yeah. Uh, I guess if you're not taking stage time, but oh my God, yes. <laughs> Hell yeah. What is this the only music video ever shot on top of a mountain in Vail? It looks like it. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, it would be fun if a See, billionaire gave birth to you. Now, I was getting ready to say, here's the problem right now with yeah. why this doesn't rock. Yeah. This person's life is good, and yes. there's no place for positivity in rock and roll. Right. That is a huge problem. Yeah. I think it's why some of the, the rock now sucks ass, is that you... We, we we gave kids great guitar lessons when they were younger because we had a little money finally and this new generation of kids that got things right. and they're not it doesn't make good music that's true you should not have positivity it's why I don't like uh, Bruno Mars. My wife loves him. She's like, it puts me in a good mood. The last thing I want from my music is to put me in a good mood. That's but, true. I said mute. It's she not a word. Mute. That's how angry I am right now. Well, your shun uh, said mute. Uh, no, it's a very good point. Yeah. It's like, you know Chuck Berry's mom didn't say, oh, this is great. Chuck right. is, yeah. you know, going on the road. This is what I want for my child. Right. That's I why I don't like comedy nerds. I like people who were ridiculously funny when they were younger with their friends, but not a person who was like, I've really studied comedy. <laughs> yeah. And this yeah. is where I think the joke should be on that. I never want to hang out with that person. I want to hang out with Patrice O'Neill, who's... You can't. Borderline. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Patrice, when he would come on our show, my favorite thing about Patrice is that that was a week. Every time was a week of emails and angry phone calls. And that's why I loved him. He yeah. just got out of his way and let him run. He, he was so mean. It was such a good Well, good that's mean. the other thing. You can be really funny and wrong about a lot of things. Absolutely. You know what I mean? That People think, oh, I'll be on the right side of society with this. And I'll be, uh -huh. But some, I mean, there's nothing funnier than somebody that you... 100% disagree with that makes you laugh. Yeah. You're like, this has got to be brilliant. And Patrice, I think, was wrong about quite a few things. Like, I got why people sure. Complain. When did we, but when did we have to start also emulating our entertainment? When right. did we have to be the same as our entertainment or yeah. be in agreement with all of our entertainment? Right. I love, I love uh, all the Godfather movies. I've never ever killed anyone ever, but I still love them. And uh, we seem to have a weird thing we do now where it's like, well, you shouldn't like that because he's different than you. You know, what was weird is that when I did see The Godfather, when I was a kid, we started doing crimes. Did you? Yeah, we said we could have our own little organization here. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, what we would do was shake down elderly people. You know, there was a candy store. We'd go in. There was an old lady. She's about 89. And we used to just grab her and push her around and take money and candy from her. How much you get? Sometimes, I mean, it was a lot for us, but it was like $16. Does know? this really happen? Yeah. I mean, you got to get out there and try things in this world. <laughs> I tried to start a candy selling business yeah. in my junior high, and I arranged a bunch of kids that who would be the drop men, I guess you would yes. call them, because you weren't allowed to even have candy in school. So I would get my mother to buy the candy. I would give it to the kids, have them sell it, and then just give me a percentage of the money. You were like Mr. Big behind yeah, the scenes. Yeah, I was. And one of them could get caught right. with candy. Yeah, right. even at that young yeah, age, I don't caught. think I realized what a uh, sociopath I am. But right. I, it worked, you know, it worked out. It worked out. I know when I was a kid, when I was a little kid, like in first grade, I did feel the same way about candy that I later was going to feel about drugs. You know what I mean? Like I was like, who's got it? What are we hearing? You know what I mean? Is somebody right. in here with candy? You get obsessed with candy my, when I, you're a kid. I have worry. My son is young. I have worries about his future because of how motivated he is by the, the dopamine receptors about right. candy and stuff like that. Yeah. I can get him. He will drop whatever he's doing if you were to say, you know, it's like, like almost like a dog. Like if you say snack or whatever, he right. will stop immediately. And that worries me some because that is, <laughs> right. I'm not kidding. I think yeah. those are behaviors that the, you, the, those are ingrained. And later on in life, if, it's just like, if pleasure is so important to you so quickly that you'll give up everything else. If uh, you could get him to break a window and then you'll give him candy, that's how you'll know, <laughs> you know. Where are we going with this, Chris? You're right behind me and you're doing crazy stuff. Uh, it's about under 30 seconds before the computer will turn us off the air. You know? oh, is that a problem? Do a plug. Matt Bearden's been in studio. Moon Tower at the Stand Comedy Club is happening tonight, January 13th at 7.30 p.m. Featuring Ron Bennington, Jessica Kirsten, Dan Soder, Big J Okerson. Go to thestandnyc.com for tickets. And the Dudley and Bob with Matt show airs weekdays at 6 a.m. on 93.7 KLBJ in Austin, Texas. All right. We'll see you next time, buddy. Thanks, Thanks guys. So it's much. great that seeing was you. A blast. See you in Austin. Peace.